Hello, boys. Welcome to the third uh, Net That Hall Compass Show of the 21-22 season. There's going to be a few changes to how this works. The Compass Show is now going to be every Tuesday night around 10 p.m., so a slightly more UK-friendly time slot. Um, I'm joined today by my co-hosts, fellow fantasy football hub writers, Hibbo and Gabriel, a.k.a. FPL Lens. How are you guys? Yeah, good. Countdown on to the season, so deadlines on Friday... We're starting to firm up our drafts. I think we're getting under the right spot now. So I suppose we're here to help the viewers get under get under a similar kind of position. Yeah, nice also, also uh, d doing well. Nice to join you boys here on the Compass Show. Um, I think I think it's a first for the three of us, right? Yeah, it okay. is. Yeah, Definitely. No, no. So we're, we're, the Dar must away. be awake. Yeah, the Dar <laughs> must be awake somewhere panicking <laughs> about us. I was, I was going to say when the cat's away, the mice will play. Well, he's probably watching from somewhere from somewhere lurking, so, lurking. so i just want to say thank you guys um for the amazing milestone that we hit before last friday stream so we hit 1k subs which we'd pledge to donate a hundred dollars to heart charity so we made the donation now on the heartfund.eu and anyone who's listening on podcasts or watching on youtube will share the kind of link in the description of the show afterwards in case you want to donate too um, we have pledged to donate again at 2k subs so please do hit the like hit the subscribe share it with your friends um Obviously, it costs you nothing, and it's made us put our hands in our pocket for a very good cause. Um, kind of mo moving over to you here, but I know we have some exciting news. We've kind of announced the mini league uh, this week on the Twitter account. Yeah, so just uh, for information purposes, the mini league code is F FG1 XMB. So, like, we've got some top players on there, like a Tom Stevenson Hall of Fame number two is on there, FPL Matthew McCarr's on there. We've also passed the 3,000 download mark on all kind of podcast platforms. So wherever you get your pods, we're also available. Um, in terms of the prizes now for the Money League, we've, they've been finalized. So first place is going to receive a box, a mystery box from Shirt Look Box. So at Shirt Look Box. Um, second prize is a copy of FPL Obsessed by Matt Whelan. And the third prize is a premium annual membership, the Fantasy Football Fix. So like previously, we've been saying to the viewers, we're providing you with education, but we're going one step further now in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And we're actually going to put a shirt in your back while we're at it. So I feel like we needed a um, FPL lens philosophy segment, but maybe that one covers it today. What do you reckon, Gabe? I think that one works for me. We'll put a shirt on your back is a, is a great life philosophy, right? Definitely. So I think we're going to do two things before we move into your matchups, which is the third of the four to go. And I know you're going to do the last one on Thursday's stream at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. So that would be the final four teams. Um, before that, I kind of want to show anyone who wasn't here last show the little blooper we have from the Tom Stevenson interview. So this was a little clip where we introduced him. We were one minute in and um, we aired this last time. Um, I hope you enjoy our self-deprecating humor and do kind of tweet us any timestamps you find when you're watching along in future that you think would make a funny 40 or 50 second clip, guys. But check this out and I might go hide and cry somewhere. Definitely our most popular member of the Net That Hall crew and you can definitely be our fifth crewmate now going forward. <laughs> Definitely be our fifth crewmate now going forward. <laughs> Hello, darkness, so just while we're here as well guys so please do continue so please do continue to hit that like and subscribe button as i was saying in the embarrassing clip so yeah as i mentioned there's another one out today with the fpl salad episode which was an rmt which leads nicely to today's episode we wanted to kind of give back to everyone um we were so appreciative of the 1k subs and um, we were only on about 400 a few weeks ago in the preseason so it's been crazy growth we love you guys all our haulers are part of the community so we're going to go through 50 rmts today that's what we've done we've managed to pull through almost three times the number from the last two compass shows and really help everyone out and give back so bear with us as we rate your teams um they've seen some decor in hippo's room just <laughs> That it reminds me, before we do go into the matchups, the one last thing I'm going to do is I just want to say hi to everyone who's in the channel. So we always like to say hi to our haulers. Sorry to the podcast listeners. Um, you are welcome to join us live on YouTube and we'll be able to interact on the show as we go. So we've got friend of the show, Ramanathan. Hello again. And um, he wants to know a little bit about Celtic and Rangers. So it's a good week for you, Hibbo, he says. Yeah, we'll not talk too much about that. No. no I didn't think so. You're like, no, I'm getting out of it. You're like, I don't want death threats no. about Scottish football. <laughs> cool. So we've got Crazy Dude. He needs as much help as possible. Um, we've got our friend. Oh, wow. Akshat Dioli. Um, 
he says sup mate all set so i think maybe a first time live viewer on the show astralicious one you're back hi mate very good um we have ante as well back again um we have tom stevenson right on cue straight after the tumbleweed uh, <laughs> video i don't know if he got to see it or not akshay sup mate really happy to have you here and then bungle morning um nice to see so just to say as well Bongo the Gooner is actually a moderator for us helping out on the channel. And at the same time, FPL Baker has been helping on the TikTok, making these funny clips that you just saw. So anyone else who wants to get involved, any haulers that want to take part, you have ideas of things we could do together, definitely get in touch. Um, we love kind of working with all of you in the community. So moving on then, let's go on to your matchups or let's hear what you've got to say about, is it Arsenal, Tottenham, Leicester and West Ham? Is that right, Gabe? Yes, Arsenal, Tottenham, uh... West Ham and Leicester in, the, in, in that order. And uh, so, yeah, just a, a quick refresher. This is just, um, these are kind of like some key stats, uh, some articles I've been writing for, for the hub this preseason. And just some key stats that kind of, um, that I weave into, into the narrative of, of how I see the team going into the season. So everything's taken from, uh, from last season. It's just stats, stats from last season. And that's all. So, um, yeah, let's get, let's get right into it here. Uh, we're going to start with Arsenal. Um, well, what, one thing we notice, obviously, in any preseason kind of content or, or writing is that every team we talk about is in evolution. So we have to kind of take that as a given from, from the get-go. Um, well, Arsenal is, is a little bit different in that I, I, I find that they're a team whose identity has, hasn't been revealed yet. So we don't know. I don't, I don't think we really know exactly in which direction they're going and what style of play they're, they're going to kind of favor. I think uh, Arteta is taking a pragmatic and methodical approach, um, which which makes sense given the the school of coaching he comes from. Um, so they Arsenal does they they do many things well. Um, they they have like a like a solid floor, but they have yet to develop a dangerous attack, which we would we've, we've seen they struggled with last season. And well. I'll admit I'm a little nervous in, in getting into Arsenal, uh, Nima, obviously because because you're here and and Lord knows who all oh, who your, um, your your minions here and are probably in the chat are talking about Arsenal. Um, so so you we'll don't see want how an army to come for you, right? Exactly. Well, luckily I don't have much to say, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to give any uh, additional thoughts onto your matchups. Um, I, I'm sure you. I'm sure you won't hold back. Um, so. Arsenal, they they having the be the fourth best pass completion last season, eighty five point one percent, and the third most through balls with thirty four. It indicates that they kind of want to be a team that can hold possession and draw opposing defenses out. So they want to play possession style football, um, draw teams out, and then slip players in behind. Obviously, uh, we've seen um, you know Arteta with with uh, Pep Guardiola for a long time. We've seen Manchester City do that quite quite effectively. Um, now the team's slowly getting to adopt this style of play and they seem, they seem up for it, um, being that they were dispossessed the fewest times last season, uh, which is a good sign in, in, their, in Arsenal's development. They were dispossessed only 260 times. But their attack was somewhat predictable. They created the fourth most chances from the left side, which were, was 131 chances from the left, compared to only 105 from the right and only 96 from the center. So, you know, we see teams like... Um, like Everton, for example, that are when they're lopsided in their attack, their attacks seem anemic. Players seem like they maybe aren't performing, but it could be a product of the predictability and not so much a product of form or so, or something else like that. Um, I think the the answer to that is yet to be revealed. We'll see once the season starts. So, I mean, it must be said that Arsenal they missed a quality forward with Aubameyang struggling through the season. Uh, if they were more dangerous and, and they were able to penetrate lines better, I think that's something they struggle with. Um, when I think Nima, you had a stat about Shaka and playing the most progressive passes in, in the entire league last season or something like that. Yeah. Like I was pretty surprised because you hear this narrative that he passes sideways or backwards and mm -hmm. he actually made the most successful final third passes or passes into the final third of any player in the premier league. And, it is kind of surprising when you hear that. It's not what I expected, but it kind of matches what you said about the through balls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, so that that's a that's a really interesting stat, and maybe uh, you know, Shaka was a uh, rumor to be leaving, and and I think I don't know, maybe maybe Gunnar Gunnar should be um, kind of thankful that that he's staying. Um, 
let's see, what else do I have here? Oh, so they they had the um, the fewest the third fewest attempts from from set pieces, which I which I found interesting. Um, they I think that's something that that they'll look to improve on, but I don't know if they have the players to do that or or even even the system. I think uh, I think Nicola Pep could be could be a player that could draw fouls and draw all kind of set pieces around the box. So that could be interesting. Um, to be fair, though, they only con they also only conceded the fifth the fifth fewest attempts from set pieces, so they're quite balanced on that front. So to talk about them defensively, they're they're a mixed bag and a little difficult to read for FPL purposes. I find um, they conceded the fifth fewest big chances and have the fifth lowest expected goals conceded. They conceded uh, 58 big chances and their XGC was 43.34. But it's also interesting that Arsenal's defense took away seven XG from from teams when their shots were on target. So subtracting their expected goals on target conceded from their expected goals uh, gives gives us that number. Um, on the flip side, they do have some some good stats. They had the joint. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And on the flip side of those good stats, they had they had the joint most the joint fourth most errors leading to a chance with eleven. Uh, so I have to cut back on those. I mistakes. can believe that a hundred percent. Right, that, that resonates, right? Yeah, there's no doubt there. Um, yeah, hundred um, percent. What I would say is, if um, we do kind of see more of an overlapping uh, fullback at the right back position, so either if Bellerin improves because it looks like he may be staying with Xhaka, um, or if we do end up buying a right back, maybe make the Niles will kind of prove to take that spot for himself and be more athletic than Bellerin. But if that happens, and I think you will see Pepe get to cut in more on the inside, on his left foot, mm -hmm. and maybe winning those kind of fouls you were talking about, getting those set pieces actually is more likely to lead to a penalty and be closer to where he's most lethal. I think mm -hmm. his weakest position is with Bellerin behind him and it kind of doesn't allow him to cut in at all and he just gets man-marked uh, out of the game yeah. by three players, basically. So that's Pepe, but... Um, I don't think we are going to be an aerial presence, as you say, either, because when you look at um, our signings, uh, Gabriel's probably the person most likely to score a set piece. Um, ben White is not notoriously tall or known for scoring set pieces either. He's not much of a threat. So in reality, I think we will continue to be pretty bad at kind of set piece goals, as you said. Um, the defensive stats do make me think Ben White is pretty appealing, though, and I don't know if that's someone who you have been looking at, but he's in my current draft, and he's the only Arsenal player I would kind of condone probably for game work, game week one. Like, what are your thoughts? I, I, I think at four or five, at four point five, it's between White, uh, Feltman, um, Ailing. Right? I don't know that we, we. I know we were having this this discussion uh, with Hibbo yesterday, right, Hibbo? Yeah, and the four point five defenders. I do like Veltman in terms of his goal involvement or his expected goal involvement. It's good, um, Luton, but his fixtures aren't really that great at the moment. Ailing, obviously, he had a lot of kind of good stats in terms of kind of expected last season, but he doesn't really deliver in terms of goals and assists. So I would just like to touch on Arsenal's fixtures. Like you know, so like when we're looking at Arsenal, they start the season. They've got Brentford away in the first game, which. We see teams come up, and it's always a difficult first match playing playing a promoted side straight out of the blocks. I think at times, then they go on they play to, 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 to Chelsea at home and Man City away. So I think it's a particularly difficult start for Arsenal. But then it gets a lot better from game week four. You're talking Norwich at home, Burnley away, Spurs at home, which is always a bit of a goal fest, and then they've got Palace, Villa, and Watford right up there, including game week eleven. Now, as you're talking about players that could appeal potentially in the attack and you touched on saying Nicolas Pepe there now I did a bit of research last night um, in terms of differentials I was looking at midfielders who were owned by less than 15% of the game who made more than 15 appearances last season a thousand or more minutes with an expected goal invol involvement per 90 of 0.5 per better and Pepe, Pepe jumps off the page I think last season per 90 in terms of FPL points, he returned 6.36, which was actually pretty good. His minutes weren't great. He had 29 appearances and he was used like 13 times as a sub, so that explains his minutes. But he had, a, he, in terms of goals, he had 0.6 goals per 90 minutes as well. So I do think he's the kind of player, if he was to get a run of minutes on the side, it's possible he could produce. And you're talking about maybe from game week four onwards. 
Yeah, no, so I've put up on the screen Yossi, Oman, another friend of the show, just a shout out there. So he's also said, why are we sleeping on Pepe? So I think that was a good time to put that up. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few other people who've come in. I thought we'd say hi to some more friends of the show. We've got Hindu Monkey from Twitter here as well. Um, he's asking me about my Ann Summers uh, email that was an Easter egg and a screenshot I sent him about our fan tracks league. Um, it looks like I forgot to crop out the promotional folder and... He's had a little peek into my life. So we've also got Trigger's Cat here. So it's going to be a pleasure rating your team. Um, I really hope it doesn't result in an unfollow because someone tonight from the 50 RMTs is getting a 1 out of 10. I don't know who, but depends how much I drink by then. Um, I'll let you get back to Arsenal, though, um, and we'll continue greeting guests as they kind of come. I was, I was just going to mention, I think another reason we're sleeping on Nicola Pep is because... I. Fans of the Premier League haven't really seen him. They haven't seen what his potential really is. When when Arsenal bought him, he was an exciting prospect. And and I think Nima was getting to the point that he really hasn't been used correctly yet at, at Arsenal because of the support behind him and that, that he takes up kind of the same space. Is that right, Nima? Yeah, so, I think so. And I think also he's got this price tag looming over his head where they think yeah. he's like, because he's 70 mil, he gets slated. But say he cost 40 mil last year, people would be talking about what a bargain it was. So in the window we bought him, it was an inflated window for wingers. And he came off the best season of his life. Like only mm -hmm. Messi and Ronaldo topped him in the world that year. So I can kind of understand what happened. And he arrived at a club that's at its worst in a quarter of a century in Arsenal. And He's kind of not played any consistent games, doesn't get any starts. Uh, we saw he did quite well at the end of the season prior to last. So he was dominating in that semi-final and final in the FA Cup against Chelsea and Man City. It looked like he turned the corner. He then didn't get the consistent starts. He got a red card. He got dropped by Arteta. Uh, William got played way too much. Um, and maybe this season we will see the Pepe that if he does consistently start by game week four, I reckon that could be one of the most exciting game breakers and value in the game um, if all goes yeah. well. He was our top scorer is what I would say. So he had 10 Premier League goals and mm. the minutes he played compared to like everyone else who had more goals than him in the league, it's like a third of the minutes. He, he had some really good free kick. He scored two free kicks mm. in person that I saw. I was in shock. I filmed the first one and I thought, oh, there's no way he's going to score a second one. It was in the Europa League and we were about to get knocked out and he scored the first one and my friend recorded the second free kick five minutes later and he scored that too. And I was like, wow, this guy's like actual raw talent and flair, the technical ability. It's there. Maybe we thought we were getting more for 70 more like a finished product. Mm. But if we give him the right support around him and build that team, he could do quite well. And we saw at the end of last season, I think he scored the most goals in like the last five game weeks of any player. So he's shown that explosiveness you want from a differential asset that people will stay away from. But I think people don't really want to hear too much about Arsenal. We talked about Pepe, we talked about White. Uh, there Ooh. was a question on Tierney. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about him at 0.5 million more than White. Is that someone who you would consider at the start of the season or is that a wait and see because of the injury issues? I mean, for me, it's a wait and see for, for fixtures. I don't I don't know that um, that I trust Arsenal through even through mixed fixtures, I want to, I want to see what, what they're doing first. Um, the one thing I will say, just uh, touching on that theme of red cards, is uh, Arsenal had the second most red cards last season uh, with five and the most own goals with four. Um, so if you guys can, you know, you got to cut down on the, on the silliness, I guess. There's a lot of mistakes. You, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I... Yeah, I guess Arteta would look to, uh, to to fix that kind of straight away, and I, I'm not sure what that what, where that comes from. That's an internal kind of more of an internal thing. Um, I don't know anything else on Arsenal. Should I, move I guess on the only first? thing would be the transfer. So if kind of mm. in the next three weeks we see someone like maybe a Madison arrive. Um, AFC Bell, who broke the party news last summer, he's put out quite a comprehensive thread saying that the interest is very real. Like a 30 mil bid plus a player was made that valued 60 mil in total. They're not interested. Uh, Arsenal asked for an intermediary. Can we have a 50 mil bid? Would you come to the negotiation table? They said no. They said 60 mil only is to start the conversation. Sounds like that bid is coming in this week. So there is the chance that Madison will come. And I think he, he sounds like he would be interested. Um, that then makes ESR kind of Smith Rowe for anyone listening a bit more of an issue, I think. Because although I've kind of said over the last few episodes he's great to start with a 5.5, his security isn't going to last. And bar that Brentford game, and then the next two are pretty bad Chelsea and City. Like now I'm starting to lean towards the you either start with Ben Bay or, or no one. And then you maybe look at Tierney and Pepe when the next mm -hmm. period comes in game week four and the window is shut. So I think. That kind of wraps up Arsenal and we're probably, yeah, ready to move on to Spurs from yeah. there. And 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's well, one thing I do want to say is I actually bought tickets because I'm a glutton for punishment today for um, Arsenal <laughs> against Chelsea. So that home game you're talking about, I'll be there and I'll be sure to try and uh, man the net that whole Twitter account and see what kind of <laughs> drunken nonsense I can spout when we beat Chelsea and the whole of the world erupts in shock and panic. I, I, I think uh, Baker might have his... Uh... I have a lot of content for the TikTok account after that. There is. We have one last question just about is Pepe nailed over Saka? Um, no, Saka is our player of the season. You know, five goals, five assists at 19 years old. Incredible. What he learned at the Euros during his time away is going to have made him a stronger, more elite player. He won't let it bring him down. He is ready to go. Um, I just want to say shout out to the classy uh, kind of Spurs <laughs> fans who in the friendly actually clapped him on. And I don't think in my life I've ever seen um, any Spurs fan ever clap any Arsenal player. So, well, maybe Barcelona Campbell when he used to be with them a lot. But. So, is there a final uh, comment on the screen from Hindu Monkey? Yeah. yeah, yeah we'll, it, we'll leave it, that for you. Hand, 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 Hindu Monkey said, Pepe is as nailed as Draftwood, which... Kind of it is very Hindu true. Monkey. Yeah, and that's why you can't start with him at 7.5. Um, if Saka didn't come back from late from the Euros, he would be my 6.5 in my team. Right now, I can just wait till uh, game week four and pick between him and Rafinha or both. That's Pepe, my opinion. In my opinion, Pepe needs an injury in the team. Like if, he, if there's an injury in the team, he probably gets more minutes, but it's expected minutes. I, I, I think, do you know what it comes down to? It's the fact that Arteta doesn't bench Oba and he's scared to bench his captain. If he only played one of Laka or Oba up top, Saka would be nailed in the left wing, which is where he actually broke out into the team originally. And because Pepe's done so well at right wing, he would keep that spot. So you'd have a kind of maybe a... Oba or Laka up front with on the left wing, you go Saka, then you got the number 10 Smith Rowe, Madison rotating if he comes, and then you got Pepe on the right wing. So that will kind of be the first 11 front four if it happens. So Pepe, I think, is nailed because uh, he seemed to change something in Arteta's opinion of him, is my last point, where he actually said about him, like, oh, he's actually changed his attitude. And I think benching him after the red card, not playing him, he kind of disciplined him. And I do wonder if that made him realize raw talent isn't enough. But yeah, that's, that's really it. That's, uh, there's some stuff about Regulion, so we'll let you go straight on to Spurs because Spurs defenders have come up in conversation and I can't let's, let that slide. Let's, let's let's touch on the first point about Spurs. Um, it's Regulion. Yeah, this is the show where we always get the pronunciation right. <laughs> unless I say Eze wrong. Uh, free letter <laughs> name and I still pronounced it wrong. <laughs> that's right. Uh, let's see, I have to make a choice between Regulion, Tierney and Shofar. Uh, I mean... I'd go. I'd go. Show the start until we see something from from the other two teams. I don't know what you guys think about that one. Yeah, I wouldn't touch the other two. I don't think. To be no, no, I wouldn't. No, yeah, not I wouldn't to start. Place. Not yeah. to start. No. Well, we'll let you tell us all about Spurs then, because there's exciting stuff happening, isn't there? And um, obviously, I just want to clarify that in in last week's episode, I I mistook a a certain player to be a Latoura Martinez. Um, I thought I was talking about the attacking player they were going to sign, and actually, it turns out I was talking about Cristiano Romero, the centre back. And soon there'll be a, a, a clip, another snippet uploaded onto Twitter. And when you see me talking about Cristiano Romero, the striker, um, just bear in mind I thought it was Latoura Martinez. Nima, Romero you, is not Lautaro. Nima, Nima, you're fiercely backpedaling here. <laughs> I just remember I said, will uh, Sun be on the wing too much? And a day later, the whole of FPL Twitter was like, will Sun be on the wing too much if Kane stays and Latura signs? Um, so I just think I was 24 hours early to the conversation. Yeah, mm. I, I don't want to eat on the uh, Gabe's time, but at the, at the same point, Martinez, Latura Martinez was never signing for Spurs. Not in a fucking million <laughs> years. Like, you know, the result is came out of it. Why, why would he have left on 30 signing for Spurs? You would need to have rocks in your head. He's probably the best young striker in the world. Like, anyone would be lucky to have him. I thought, man, sorry, we're going to be linked to him at one stage, and then there was this chat about him signing for Spurs. And apparently, they said to him in a board meeting, you're signing for Spurs, and he just bust out laughing. He just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> sorry to any of our Spurs haulers. Well, let's, let's do it. Let, well, we'll make up for it by, uh, by getting to something that Spurs does well. Um, and uh, with that, obviously, they, they, create, they created the, the most. Most of their chances down the center of the field, we know that. Um, they had the third most assists, which I, which I thought was interesting. They had 50 assists, which was third most last season. Um, and they had 23 chances from counterattacks last season. 
They were that was second most. The most was uh, Nuno's Wolves with 24. Uh, so now Nuno at uh, at Spurs, you can, you know, you can you you would think that he'd kind of double down on that on that counter attacking style, which I think suits both Kane and Son, you know, perfectly fine, right? Um, so I mean, last season, obviously, recency. We all have a little bit of recency bias, I think, when it comes to Nuno. Um, you know, last season he was missing his target in Jimenez, and they they struggled tremendously um, in in their attack. So. Um, Let's see. I wouldn't be surprised to see their split of 132 chances from the center compared to 91 from the right, and a surprisingly actually low 94 from the left skew further towards the center with with Harry Kane as Nuno kind of like focuses the attack on Harry Kane. Um, I will be interested to see what what Nuno does with uh, with Hyun Min Sung um, because there there are a lot of things that Nuno I think did with different players: Adama Traore, Pedro Neto. Um, different players in different areas of the field that, that he might um, that he might do with Son, so that'll be really interesting to see. Um, but but I, I I think everything's going to go through Kane if if Kane stays. Um, obviously, I wrote this just just so everyone knows. I wrote this last week, um, so some of you know obviously we we've, we've had information since then. Um, what else? Let's see, uh, I wrote um, Spurs' third most assists is something to be examined by each manager individually. It comes with an, with an expected assist of 25.28. So it's an overperformance of expected stats due to kind of due to clinical counterattacking team. Or, or I guess that's the question to ask, right? Is it an overperformance of expected that stats due to a clinical counterattacking team? Or is the delta of 24.62 too much of an outlier and there has to be some kind of regression there? Um, you know, if you're, if you were speaking at the beginning of the season, um, then the former is probably correct. If you're talking about later on in the season, then the latter is probably correct. And we just kind of have to, you know, decide that one for ourselves. So, uh, Spurs having the eight fewest shots in the box could also be a result of the counter attacking style and, uh, and perhaps shouldn't be of too much concern though. Um, Nuno is inheriting a team with some good dribblers. Spurs had the six most successful dribbles and the six most and and the six most dribbles last season. Uh, he liked dribbling players um, at Wolves. Nuno liked dribbling players as Wolves at Wolves as well. And I wouldn't be surprised uh, to see players given freedom to run with the ball, despite Spurs having the second most unsuccessful dribbles last season. Um, Nuno's kind of hyper dribbling Wolves. They had 382 dribbles last season compared to this. Um, 365 for, for Spurs. So I, that's one thing I think uh, we'll see from Son is I, I think we'll see Son running at players with the ball. Like if he's if he's linking play from the left and Kane is stretching the defense, I think that could create room for, for Son to kind of drive at defenders. Um, so last season, Nuno's Wolves had the second most crosses. Um, and I think they'll kind of do some more of that uh, since, you know, having having an actual target this season. Um, so, so, you know, just expect a lot more crosses Kane as the focal, as the focal point defensively, there are kind of three areas of improvement for Spurs, um, that relate to discipline, tactical awareness and technique, um, on, from the Wolves side, Wolves conceded the second most penalty kicks last season and added three own goals. Um, I expect a, a goalkeeper of the caliber of Loris, um, to, to not have, to, not have 22 parries to the opposition, um, but parries to the opposition has always been his Achilles heel. And Nuno, so, you know, I mentioned the previous stats because Nuno's sides are not really, um, let's say, disciplined, uh, I guess, aside from from Cody, but even he has his moments. So that's something that, that I would be concerned with, uh, that this defense is going to make a lot of mistakes, um, even though they have been good in, in their recent preseason games. Um, you couldn't convince me to go near a Spurs defender. Um, Regulon. How do you say it? Uh, I can't do it. Regi, Regi, Regulon. Regulon. Wow, dude. Regulon. Amazing, Look, quick that Persian bro. fire coming yeah. in. We got the char sound. So. <laughs> right. But um, so on that note, um, let's say hi to a few more guests who have some Spurs questions for you, Gabe. Um, I think everyone's finding this quite fascinating, but they're kind of asking um, why would you go for, say, Cresswell over Dean? Um, they're asking about stuff later. They're talking about Regulon at five mil. They're saying 
Uh, Kufal's much better. I'm seeing a lot of people saying they're going to get Trent. And um, no one seems to even be able to spell his name there. No, pronounce it. But Simi, they're writing. They're not even putting the whole name out there anymore. It's just Simi. <laughs> it's just um, Simi. Yeah, so Simi's in here. Um, uh-huh. I think people are saying, if we're talking about Arsenal defenders earlier, they're saying they recommend Rico Henry. So th- there's kind of not a lot of love for Arsenal defence from the fans. I have no love for the Spurs defence from my side. But I know that Hebo has a lot of love for Hyung Min Sun. Um, so there's been some questions. Um, we've got Lynn, friend of the show here as well. She's asked about rumours of a monkey trying to shag me. And she kind of came to see what it was about. But she'd rather know whether Kane is staying. And on that note, I'd love to know whether you, Hibo, like, what are your thoughts? Like, can I shag the monkey? And on top of that, what happens to Sun if Kane stays? Well, I think you're recently married. So there have been no shagging apart from jazz. Um <laughs> As far as Kane staying, oh, his statement was pathetic. Like he started, re- he started really backpedaling because he thought that maybe Man City were going to sign Messi. I don't know if Man City have the money to sign Grealish and Messi in the same summer without selling players. I don't know, but in terms of Spurs, like you look last season, and you know you look at their numbers, but in terms of like their expected goal involvement and their actual goal involvement, Kane and Son are obviously off the charts. They have a great block of fixtures from game week two and game week f- the game week two to game week four. So I think you're talking there. They've got Wolves away, Watford at home, Palace away. At the minute, the way we're setting up our teams in terms of structure, we're probably looking at, say, Mo Salah as a lock. You're maybe going to want Bruno Fernandes on there as well. I, I, while these boys are at Spurs, I'm finding it a bit hard to put them on. Even Son, as much as I'm a fan of Son, I'm finding it hard to put them on because I really want Bruno for that initial six game week block for United like what's your thoughts yes I, I'm actually now considering like Son as someone to even start with because I know they've said that Kane is um, kind of ready to go for game week one but I don't think that means he starts and on that note like Son at 10 million there's not a world where it seems odd to kind of if I had a 3-5-2 and I did kind of dud my third striker to a 4.5 I would go for probably Salah, Bruno, and Son. And just because, even though that's a City fixture, I think he's pretty like on fire in the preseason. He obviously scored against Arsenal. Um, he's been scoring before that too. So he's clinical. He had his best season of his career last year. And, you know, if Kane's going to be bedded back in while he either does or doesn't move, it seems a good time to have him for City. And even if Kane's back in game week two, Son's good with or without Kane. Like his numbers yeah. back up either way. So... Well, I think you're looking at the game week one fixture with Man City and it's a gamble. Is he going to score? Is he not going to score? And I think we looked at Man City last season and they started the season quite slow. And then you're looking at the, the, the block from 2 4 Son could maybe do something there, but I don't know. In some of those weeks, I'm maybe going to be considering a captain. I'm probably going to be looking at Bruno for captain, saying maybe around game week three or four, potentially. So I don't know. At the minute, I'm kind of leaning towards not. And a 3 5 2, I don't really know how viable it is because. We don't really have a playing cheap striker, so I would rather have a brown hull and play a three four three than than play the three five two. We like Oba Fembe's off the cards because he's going to Blackburn, so I'm not too sure at the minute. I'm, I'm leaning towards no son as much as I really like him. I think if it got to a stage where we knew Kane was definitely gone, all right, Spurs are going to lose that a lot of creativity we, we, if Kane goes out of the side, but he's going to gain penalties, and I think he's probably maybe going to play in a two with Dele Alley if Kane goes, which. A ten million, he's a two hundred point player, so he appeals a lot to me. Obviously, you you know I'm a big fan. Although I, I I'll say one thing, I'll push back a, a little bit on the like at the beginning of the season where we know we're going to learn a lot, right? In, in the first say three game weeks, um, I don't know that a that a player that's going to get you two every week, like a like a four or five playing midfielder, is really much better than a, than a non playing forward, because you always you always have that wild card to to. That you can hit if, if you if you think that you got you got too many things wrong, right? And if, if that's one of the things you got wrong, I feel like that's relatively minor. Um, whereas if you go for on the flip side, if you go for rather than spending the money on Sun, if you go for like say the the Ben Ramas of the world, um, Harrison, like these six zero six five, even the seven fives that have questions, and you you like don't hit on a few of those. Then that'll force you into a wild card too. So either way, um, I, I, I'm not bothered too much by the non-playing forward. I'll try. I'll try and tell you my point of view where I'm coming from here. So and I know Anthony Chunks touching on it in the chat. He's saying he doesn't think that um, 
one dead spot and the bench is bad at the start of the season, which is really echoing your point. Now, what I'm going to say is, we see all the teams on FPL Twitter at the minute, and we're potentially looking at a couple of dead spots because we've got Samakas, the left-back now for Liverpool. People are talking about a Marty. I've seen people with three, two four million defenders. Some of them have three four million defenders, and some of them have like two of these four million defenders and like, and like a non-playing forward. And then they're, they're, maybe, they're maybe looking in the midfield as well, and when you're looking in the midfield, they're maybe having a few risks in the midfield as well. And I'm looking at these sides going, this could be derailed fairly quick. Like, you know, it's... Do, do, you, know oh, saying is, so far. do you know what the saying is? I always say you can't win FPL in game week one, but you can sure lose it. You can't, there's a lot of teams have a lot of risk built in, is what I'm trying to say. And if, if you're taking a lot of punts in the midfield and you also have a dead spot striker and two four million defenders, you could be well cured in game week two. I think yeah, I know yeah. a lot of people who would do that. Um, but what are your thoughts on... Um, I know we want to obviously talk about um, the matchup club. So after Spurs, I know we've got Leicester and West Ham. But there's a lot of talk about the 4 million um, Liverpool defender and whether he's kind of nailed at least for the first three game weeks. I guess my, my way of answering that, just to keep you guys here, is if you wait till the Q&A at the end, um, we'll tell you. Because first, we've got to get through those two clubs I mentioned in the matchups and then 50 RMTs. So... You know, steady yourselves. It's going to be a long ride tonight. <laughs> Should I continue then with uh, with Spurs? I just have um, just one last bit on Spurs here. Really, the 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 dilemma with Spurs or, or the conundrum or you know the the thing we all have to wrestle with is the their expected data and how much value we put on that. Uh, they outperformed their expected goals conceded by. A, by more than any other team um, with uh, 5.03 and they out, outperform their expected goals by 14.23 which is which is crazy um, so do we put this down to style of play um, or do we put it down to you know variance or uh, something that is asking for regression that's that's going to be the question it's first what are your thoughts here, Bo? Um, we've had some insults in the live chat about like why have people tuned in to listen to us seriously talking about Spurs defenders. So I think I'll move that conversation on. And say it's only really Sun. And yeah, like I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, not, that's that's like it to me. Like there is only one player I want. I'm I'm not buying a Spurs defender all season. Maybe I think like you know I, I might get sucked. Remember under. what you said about Palace. <laughs> exactly. yeah. keep saying that. No, 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 no. What I will say, <laughs> what I will say is. I might get suckered on the double game week, but I don't know. Like, you know, you're looking at them and people at the start, whenever they signed Doherty, people were talking about him like the second coming of Christ and that they were going to play this wing back formation, which is hasn't happening. They're playing a 4 4 2, and these guys are going to be fairly progressive. What I will say about Doherty in a 4 4 2, we didn't even trust him to play the right back in Ireland for Ireland in a 4 4 2. You know, he, 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 he was trusted. We, we actually played him on the right side of midfield with Coleman and behind him. So I would have doubts about him defensively in a 4-4-2. And we're maybe going to see that if he's going to play Regalon and Doherty in a 4-4-2, I think, I think they could maybe could ship a few goals, if I'm being totally honest with you. What do you think about Deli Ali before we move on from Spurs? Any, any takers? Because mm-hmm. there was a question about what's the best 6.5. Um, I rate you if you start the season with Delhi Ali after we all got sucked in by the Prime documentary last season too. No chance. <laughs> like yeah, not not going near my team, but some people might like him. I don't know. I like his hair. His hair's nice. He's yeah, kind of got this kind of yeah. dreadlock, dreadlock yeah. thing going on. We've got people complaining about your accent again, and more than one of them as well here, but they want a translator to be paid for full time. The budget doesn't stretch. <laughs> we'll get you the paint for the wall first. Um, we'll get you the paint first. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry for any new listeners who don't understand the uh, the banter of the last nine preseason episodes, all culminating to this one. Um, anything add add to Spurs, or should I show the uh, Tumblebee clip one more time before the next half of matchups? Tumblebee. Tumbleweed. Okay, guys, any new listeners, enjoy the self-deprecating humour of what is net that hall. Um, one week, one of these other hosts will end up the person who is going to be on the clip. But so far, I seem to be the one embarrassing myself every week. So, <laughs> Tom Stevenson, enjoy for the maybe fifth time you've watched this. I must be making you feel quite anxious about seeing this clip so many times definitely our most popular member of the net that hall crew. And you can definitely be our fifth crewmate now going forward. <laughs> Oh, 
definitely our fifth crewmate now going forward. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my so, just while we're here as well, guys, so please do continue. So please do continue to hit like and subscribe if you've just joined, as I was saying in the highly embarrassing clip. <laughs> you know what I never noticed in that clip? I, I, I've never paid attention to Hibble's face, and he looks genuinely concerned for you. It's like, oh I never noticed the smirk from uh, Tom until the zoom in. But There's, there's something sure. new every, every single time. Hello, there's, dark, there, it's my old friend. There's something really uncomfortable about watching a man die in his arse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there you go, because I said at 40 minutes we'll be going on to RMTs and we've only got through half of matchups, so I won't disturb you um, for the next two matchups. We'll let you get all the details out from the articles. All right, I'm, 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 I, I do want to get to the team, so that's the more, most important thing for today. So for I am sure. gonna, so stay with me while I while I fly through the rest here. Nice one. Um, yeah, we won't I'm, I'm just, options at the end. I'm, I'm flying through my through my notes. Um, so West Ham's attacking stats here. Um, they they revolve around their 775 crosses, which was good for fourth most in the division last season. Um, those crosses of, um, obviously were successful. They were complemented by the third highest cross completion with 23.9%, resulting in the most headed shots, 107, and the most headed goals, 15. I think that's a joint most headed goals of 15, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Moyes employed a counterattack and crossing style of play, and he, he obviously has the personnel to do that well. Um, he created the fifth most chances from counterattacks with 21. And their deliveries were special as the team boasted the fourth most uh, assists with 46. Um, the uh, ability of their players to send perfect passes and Lingard's, honestly, Lingard's wonder goals kind of well, kind of saved West Ham uh, several times last season. And they were largely responsible for, for an XA of only 31.92 because um, they they had the fourth most assists, but their XA was, wasn't very high because of those goals. Uh, the difference of 14.08 may not be sustainable. Um, uh, some may call that overproduction, but anybody that's seen kind of Ben Rama playing in that spot recently, um, you know, might think differently. Uh, and we can get to Ben Rama here shortly. So, conflictingly, kind of uh, West Ham West Ham's expected goals on target was 6.27 less than their expected goals. So, despite those kind of Lingard wonder goals. Um, they, they still kind of overall took 6.27 XG away from, from their shots when on target. Um, I don't really know what to make of that one. So I, I don't know. Good luck with that one. <laughs> what, to, what, what to conclude there. Um, I was surprised how little stood out regarding West Ham's defense. Like, again, they were kind of, they remind me of Arsenal. Mostly unremarkable, not too bad. Um, balanced defense from kind of a chances uh, conceded perspective. They were a team that um, that seemed as likely to keep a to keep a clean sheet against the top side as they were to concede a goal or two against the struggling side. Um, very difficult to predict. Um, so I think making their defend, I think that makes their defenders. If you are going with a Schofel or a um, or Cresswell, I think you have to start them every week, regardless of matchup. Um, and and if they do well, if they get a clean sheet, they are likely to to get you bonuses as well. So there's always that, and you don't want to miss out on those because of the matchup. Um, and, and we'll see what happens with the, with the goalkeeper, right? Uh, with Fabianski, because they brought in Ariola. I know people rate Ariola. I've been seeing, watching him for a long time since he was a backup at Madrid. I don't think he's very good. And I don't think Fabianski has anything to worry about, but Fabianski is also 36, 36, 37. Um, you know, he had the fourth fewest parries to the opposition last season. And, um, so yeah, I, I think he'll keep his job. Thoughts on West Ham? I think if I'm looking at, say, their defenders, and if you're looking at kind of defenders within the range, kind of 45, I think Kufal jumps off a page, really. like He was fairly durable last year. He played 34, he made 34 appearances, 3,000 plus minutes. And if you're looking at that price bracket, he, 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 per 90, he had 1.3 key passes, 0.3 big chances created, and he had a combination expected goal and assist of 0.22. Which kind of tops a pole for defenders at around that price point. And if we're looking at their fixtures, the first four are good, like Newcastle away, Leicester at home, Palace at home, Southampton away. So I do, I do think there's a bit of appealing Kufal. And I think Antonio's obviously, like, you know, he's, he's usually appealing. We talk about him in terms of glass hamstrings and stuff like that. He could pull up at any moment, but 
he can perform and he's a streaky kind of player and those are kind of Antonio games for me. Hmm. I have Antonio in my team. Um, so far, 5 million, I was looking at him actually, but um, I was saying in the chat earlier, I'm actually now looking to go away from that because I don't want triple West Ham. And um, in my you opinion, have... like Ben Rama is the next guy I'm looking at and I can't really give up that third spot. What do you think about Ben Rama's minutes? Do you think, you know, because we look at him last year and I think... He was maybe subbed on nineteen times or something like that. I think you know. Do you think? Do you think his minutes will be okay? Or? I, I think he's nailed for at least the first kind of say three to six game weeks solely because uh, West Ham have only spent more money on two players in their history as a club. So when they signed him, he was meant to be a serious signing, and it was a COVID year. You know, it takes time to adapt to the Premier League, and in my opinion, like all I needed was to see the interview after the recent friendly where. They asked Antonio, like, oh, what's going on? And Ben Ram was listening. He goes, oh, Ben, he's on fire. Ben, he is fire. And he was just going crazy. And I was like, okay, Mikel, you, you are like the definition of the sexiest non-premium player in FPL. And you think that about Benny? Okay. Like, you're both coming straight into my team. So I think, I think Baker I mean. just got his clip. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. And the main thing I will say is Tom Stevenson, the man, the legend himself, yeah. And I will play the clip again before the end of the show, Tom, just to keep haunting <laughs> you. But, but um, aside from that, he does say that it does replace Lingard. And my opinion yeah. is one of the reasons people were surprised West Ham didn't go back in for Lingard, I think, is because they've seen enough from Benny to give him the mantle full time. Well, there were, there were fairly serious links between West Ham and Marius Pereira. And he obviously went to the Middle East. I thought he was going to move to West Ham. So you could be right. These ASICs, as expected, minutes could increase and we could see a bit of output. But I'm kind of getting shades of... Mm dare I say, meet you about Ben Rama because there's mm. there's kind of similar preseason hype and we're looking at that first block of games and we're thinking, if you're going to punt the player, he's not, he's not the worst punt in the world. He's a nice price, you know. One thing I want to say about Ben Rama as well is when he did play, he was taking shots for fun. So he was taking shots like every 22 minutes, which is um, more than, you know, cu current kind of FPL darling Kai Havertz. So every 24 minutes, it's more than the likes of Jota, Greenwood, any of those players. So for a 6 million, like that was the SAR spot for me before, playing for Watford, who just play in their own half. To be able to get someone from a West Ham team that qualify for Europe, yeah, that sounds pretty appealing to me. And you can just jump off it's not an expensive punt it's not like i'm punting on amares at nine million um you know i can kind of move away from him if all goes wrong well one thing it, I, sorry go ahead Hibble. as expected points per 90 or 5.8 ben rama and he, he was he was particularly creative so per 90 he had 1.75 key passes 0.4 back chances created and he had 0.4 assists per 90 as well so i think i think he's he's production potentially looks good if he gets a minutes obviously well, one thing I'll actually add for uh, for West Ham in in midfield is two of their first three opponents in uh, Palace and Newcastle. They were first, let's see, first and what is it? Their boss first and, right? With, uh, set pieces conceded from right, like uh, two of the for, they're playing. Or is they were bottom and third from bottom for um, headed shots conceded last season, okay. and so Socek could be an interesting person to start with for in the first three games. Six million as well, right? Six million. And, and to I've go seen like, him in no teams on Twitter. And and honestly, like I, I think it it would be it would be quite punty and risky, of course, but a but a Ben Rama Socek double up I think would be quite sexy. Yeah, I think so. And that means that Sufal then ends up being a wait and see. And we will yeah. come to Mariner's FDR in a bit. And something that I noticed there was that West Ham seems to there'd be a question mark around them. It's almost like, are they a trap? So although it might look like they have great fixtures, according to the same algorithm that kind of had an 80% captaincy success rate last season, the reality is that, you know, West Ham, maybe they're not as good as we think defensively anyway. Attacking-wise, I'm all over mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And I think if you had only one punt in your team, Benny would be the guy. Um, you probably don't want more than two to three risks, though, in your starting 15, right, for game week one. It depends you know how you play. Do you know who I feel? I feel a bit uneasy because I'm looking at, say, my, my strike force at the minute and I've got Angs, he's made a glass. I've got Antonio, he's made a glass. You know, if I'm then going to take a punt in midfield, I'm just, it, it's kind of making me a bit nervous if I'm being totally honest. Yeah, depends, I guess, how many punts you have, right? Um, for me, he becomes Saar and Saar was a punt before that. So it's like, 
it's just one pump for another. I'm not. I've kind of mm. cooled on Sar myself. I've definitely cooled on Sar. I, I saw them concede ten goals to three Premier League teams in the <laughs> preseason friendlies, and that's making me doubt my Backman Foster duo. But I well, think I saw, time, yeah, so go on. I, I saw a Watford fan reply to Lidraiser on, on Twitter, and he basically made the point that they haven't had their their, their starting defence together in those preseason games. So. He was saying, look, don't read under it too much. But I think when you're looking at that subconsciously, you're always going to think, why am I starting with Backman? I, I, I think in terms of goalkeeper, I know we don't want to jump about too much, but I don't want to overthink it. I'm just going to go with Sanchez and I'm not even going to think about it. I think that's what I mean. It's 3% ownership for Backman, like 25% for Sanchez, if you add in the Brighton defenders as well. So I had Veltman before and Backman. I'm now leaning towards going back to Sanchez and moving Veltman on to someone a bit more exciting. But... um. I guess let's go into the last team because I'm gonna, we, I'm, we, gonna I'm gonna invite us to, to move on to the uh, the rate my teams. I think, okay, I think let's because the, the next one is quite long and there are, there are a lot of stats and I think I um, guess we could put five on the Thursday show then. Yeah, why not? Um, there is the FDR, so I will rattle through the FDR. But before that, I'm just gonna play a quick um, little ad for all about FPL.com. It's a completely free site. Always will be. Um, I'm one of the co-editors there and. You know, it has everything you need. There's 60 pieces in the preseason to help shape your strategy. Are you craving more FPL content? Then look no further than allaboutfpl.com. Head over there for weekly articles from some of the top content creators on the planet. So what are you waiting for? Head over to allaboutfpl.com, the website for all your FPL needs. So, so what are you what waiting, are you waiting for? for? Okay, nice. <laughs> one, two. <laughs> yes, I like that. Um, so Dar would be proud. So what are you waiting <laughs> for? Um, I'm going to be selling ads on this slot. Um, $100 an episode. Get in touch, peeps. Um, I, I think you should have a t-shirt with So what are you waiting for? Like, across the front. <laughs> that will be the new branding. Bungle saying in the chat, hashtag W-A-Y-W-F. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. true. That's good. So just quickly on the FDR, so this will be covered in a lot more detail on Thursday's matchup, a capture show with you, uh, Gabriel, and with Mariner when he's back. And I think it's been covered on most of our preseason episodes. So I'm not going to go into I want to get to the RMTs. It's why everyone's here. We're on 55 uh, live views, which is fantastic considering that there is no FPL Salah, there is no Tom Stevenson, and yet you guys are still here to support. So I'm in a little bit of shock. Um, what I want to say is that FPL Mariners fixture difficulty is FDR. It's based on the matchups from an attack versus defense or defense versus attack. It uses three, da three data pieces, essentially, to take up one third importance each. So one of them is the 2019-20 pre-lockdown with fans. Um, so he's got data from people like Norwich and Watford carried through from there. It's the 2020-21 full season with no fans. In that, he's got the Brentford Championship data in there, as opposed to Norwich and Watford that have Premier League data from the fan season. And then he has the 2020-21 last six, where there was some fans. So he kind of carries some weight to a full season versus the last six more recently. It looks at things like the XG per 90 versus XG conceded per 90, big chances per 90 versus big chances conceded per 90, shots in the box per 90 versus shots in the box conceded per 90. It uses Ben Krellin's ratings of 0 to 7, so zero is the best, seven is the worst. And essentially, if it's green or dark green, it's a positive FDR, positive um, fixture difficulty. If it's red, it is negative. What Mariner would love us to say is that, you know, the tools on the official FPL site, the kind of the red, white, and green, they're not sufficient. You can't play FPL this way. You can't just have one color coding for both attack and defense. A team could have a red FDR for defending, but have a green FDR for attack that week. So I think without further ado, I'm just going to quickly tell you on the shortlist he has here. This is for the game week one to game week five stretch. The shortlist for attack on Mariners FDR, which we'll go into more at the end of the week, is essentially Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Chelsea and Leicester as the teams to have attackers from. And interestingly, the punts are West Ham, Newcastle and Villa. Going on to defence... He has for the FDR from Game Week 1 to 5, he has shortlist of Man City, Brighton, Man United, Chelsea and Leicester. So I ask, are we sleeping on Chelsea here? And the punts are actually Arsenal and Liverpool. And interesting to see Liverpool as a punt in his FDR as opposed to a top defence. Um, so I'm not going to ask you guys for any input here or any thoughts because I think this has been covered before. We're going to cover it again. 
let's go straight to the RMTs. We'd love to kind of go through all 50 of them. So this could take like an hour. And then there will be live Q&A for anyone who's still alive at the end of this. Um, hopefully, I can still operate the mouse and keyboard. I may need to turn my camera off at some point to refill. So I know that Hibbo has got a quick whiff of the first draft here. So we have um, on Twitter, at FPL Rachel. She has um, a... WB, so Wan Bissaka for anyone listening, um, and she wonders if it could be Shaw. She has Antonio, she's not so keen on him, and she wants Trent and doesn't have him. For the podcast listeners, Hibbo, um, I'm going to hand it over to you, but could you read out the teams going forwards from goalkeeper and then give your score out of 10? Yeah, and no maybe just one minute on what you like or dislike about Rachel's team. Yeah, so goalies, Mark, Mark Ness, Starton, Foster on the bench, defence, Rudiger, Ben White, Wan Bissaka, Cody, and Amarty. Son on midfield, Smith Rowe, Salah, Fernandez, fairly standard. Um, Tony or Brownhill is a sub as well. Ivan Tony, Antonio, and Angs. I think that strike force is fairly template. I like it. Um, Rudiger, I don't know if I would start with Rudiger. I know she's more than likely going to change one per second of the show, which I like. If I had to read it, I would maybe read it at five and a half. I know it might sound harsh, but. Um, how would you get Trent on? I think Trent's essential. How would you get Trent on that side? Yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, do you have any thoughts on this um, lens before we go to the next one? I, I think maybe Martinez. You could downgrade the goalkeeper and maybe try and beef up to get Trent somehow. Like, five point five feels a lot for me. Um, I'd rather find like the next season's Martinez if possible. I think five mils the most I would stretch to. And but again, is zero point five really going to get you Trent? Like. Both Rodrigo and Wan Bissaka are 5.5. I it's, think so. It, Go ahead, sorry, Gabe. I was just going to say, it's one of those teams that okay, you, don't, you, see, you don't see where that Trent money is invested. It feels like you can't find that value anywhere else. It's like it's, it's, that money has just kind of disappeared and it's just not, not in the team anymore. I think I would rate Hibble's rating about a 9. Yeah, I, I'll give him a nine. It was, it, was a good, it was a good rating. It was a good rating. For anyone who is listening on podcast, the way we're doing it is we're letting one of us run the show. Uh, they give their review, and the other two review their review. So, it's Hibbo's review is what he gave Rachel, and what we're giving is actually a review of Hibbo's reviewing. Hibbo. It's very metaphysical. <laughs> I know. Um, I guess the next thing I would also say is we're going to move on to the next team. But before we do, guys, in the live chat. Um, please do start to get involved. Um, we'd like to see what you score these people because when they watch yeah. the episode, they can see what the majority also think of their team. So as we go, don't be afraid to be brutal. Last week, there was people slapping out one out of tens all over the place. Um, let's get the first one out of ten going, guys. Let's do this. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be an exciting episode. <laughs> nice okay. I'll let next. you go next, um, Hip. Oh, no, sorry, Lens. I'll let, I'll let you go on this one. All right, this one's from at Surav M15, uh, um, and he has Sanchez in goal, uh, Alexander Arnold, Schofal, and Target are the back three. It's a midfield five of Salah, Mares, Sar, Fernandez, Hafinha, and a front two of Watkins and Antonio. The bench is Foster, Ailing, Amarte, and Obafemi. Um, I, I like the I like the idea of a of a back three. I, I think I, I hate I hate the goalkeeper, but it's a sensible choice. I hate that it's a sensible choice. Um, I like I like the idea of a solid back three. Um, I don't like Watkins. If I don't like Watkins, given the the situation right now, uh, Sar. I've I've never been hot on Sar. I, I don't trust Watford's attack at, in the slightest. And Andy's on the wing. I I don't like that situation at all. I would give this, I'd give this a six because because uh, I like Antonio, I like I like Hafinha and Salah and Mara as kind of like as a core of the group. I'll read your I, review. I'll read your review. Seven out of ten. I give it a six out of ten um, because <laughs> um, I, I don't know why. I just feel like being mean, and I feel like we need to get those baselines out early. There's fifty to go through, and we can't be giving seven out of ten all night. I, I think Watkins, like, I, I don't think he could be starting the season with Watkins. Not after he went off uh, with a knock and no. Ings has come in. Like, I, I had Watkins, but I downgraded him to Tony personally. And maybe in this team with that extra one million, Saar could become like a Harvey Barnes or someone a bit more interesting playing for a more I, attacking I, team. And if I was going to pack a four million defender instead of a Murray, I would probably go for Simicus. 
Maybe. So some people are saying they'd only rate one out of ten for any teams that have Simi in them. Shout out to Simi. <laughs> da is in the house as well. So FPL Mariner, the founder of the show, the father of Net That Hall, the legend that is Da, he is here. You, 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 you could see why a manager would not want to use up a, a third Liverpool asset on a, on a defender like that, though. Maybe, if they had Jota. If they have no Jota, I'd be a bit confused. Why not? We're, just have... we're, we're, we're going to get into a big debate if we start that. But I just I, yeah. don't, I, don't, I, I don't really know who you trust out of Samakas or Jara, if I'm being completely honest with you, because the whole narrative around Jara was, oh, Firmino's a fucking played back-to-back competitions. He's not going to be ready. He, he, he showed up in pre-season. He's played minutes. He scored goals, and you're thinking scored a brace. <laughs> he scored a brace. Is Jara going to start in game week two? He's Klopp's favourite boy. Um, Klopp wishes his know. teeth were as white as Bobby's. I don't know. It does block you off, but at the same time, I think Samakas. You're maybe only going to get two games out of him as well, so I don't really know. And, and that's and I think that's the point. Like not knowing, just by sticking with two Liverpool assets, then you can pivot. Once, once you know something. But if you have three, then you're locking yourself in. What, what I will say about this team, though, is I don't mind a dead third forward. So, interestingly, I think it is a good use of money. So, if that Watkins was kind of changed to any other 7.5, I think suddenly I would think it was a much higher score. As an well, that, that, and that's why I rated it a six, because it's a simple fix. You, just, you know, you fix the Watkins thing. Maybe, maybe, Watkins, maybe it was an early submission. Who knows? So, simple It couldn't fix have been, because it's got the flag on it, man. The injury flag is yeah. there. Like, I don't know, but yeah. yeah. yeah Let's keep going because we're on number two of 50. We've got people already calling us out saying that we're just asking people to change their teams to our teams, which isn't that what all our MTs are pre This is what this whole show is about. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I can't wait till we get to your team, which is actually very soon. I can see it in the slides coming up. Um, next. Let's move on to next. So this is for me, at V Ruben. So this is FPL Hafiz, great guy on Twitter. He has 0.5 million in the bank. He has Meslier in goal, uh, Trent, Shaw and Sufal, Salah, Fernandez, Ben Rama, Barnes and Gundogan with Ings and Tony up top. His bench is Steele, Veltman, Obafemi and Livermento. Um, I like the Meslier pick. For me, that is someone who I would put as a set and forget all 38 weeks. I expect a large number of saves from him. I think he made the most saves per game where Martinez made the most saves in total. So I really like that pick. Um, I like Eiling, so it does make it tough spending the extra 0.5, but I've been seeing Eiling playing in centre-back in the preseason, and we don't want the same as what happened last season, so Mezier could be nicer. I do like the Gundogan pick, but seeing De Bruyne back in training makes me a bit more nervous. I would like to find the 0.5 and go up to Grealish. So kind of looking at the team as a whole, I would give this an easy 7.5 out of 10. I think I would make it an 8 out of 10 if kind of maybe Gundogan and Barnes and Ben Rama, that's three big risks there. And then you've got Tony, who's new to the Premier League and Ings is an injury risk. So if it was that kind of four or five of the players, if you just tweet one or two of them, it could easily be a much higher score. But there's just a lot of fire that could happen, in my opinion. And you may need to either wildcard or take some big hits if it goes wrong. Score at a 10, please. 7.5, I was saying. I'll rate your written a nine then. I like Harvey Barnes. I, think I like the Harvey Barnes pack. I don't like the Lovermento pack because we don't know if he's going to play. At least, you know, we have Murray and maybe Samakas that they're maybe going to get some kind of minutes in the first two games. This guy could become an absolute four, but we don't know if he is yet, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Let's, what are you thinking? Uh, I, 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 would, I, would get, I would give your rating a 7.5. Um, I, 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 think, I think this team is great. I think the biggest really um i guess criticism is at, is at the 4.0 defender but i love gundawan for the first three game weeks with if uh, if kdb is out i just i just think it's a he's a really great pick in the short term um yep marin is saying there's no way we're going to get through 50 he thinks he'll be back by golf by then um, <laughs> we're on number four so we've gone back around full cycle i think we need to speed these up then it sounds yeah. like um, Let's go for you here, boys. Back to rotate it back to you now. Right, so this is our friend Banger for, does the podcast. So uh, just for the podcast for your so in goal, he's got Sanchez and Foster, Backline, Shaw, Trent, Ben White, Kufel, Oma Bamba Deli, Jara, Fernandez, Salah, Gundogan, Ben Rama, Ings, Tony, and Obafembe up front. 
But I probably read it as an eight to be honest with you. Like, you know, I know he's got the dead striker, but he's got a bit of a powerhouse midfield. He's still got Trent and Shaw on the back line, so aye. Eight. Eight. I, I think it's a nice team. I, I give your review a nine out of ten. I'd give the review an eight out of ten. I I, I think that there's a, there's a lot of risk in midfield. It's it's maybe one too many risky players with Jota, uh, Gundogan, and and Benarama. Um Fair. Um, th- I think this one is for you then, uh, Gabe. Another friend of the show. Uh, this is from Praz uh, at Praz underscore FPL. He has Sanchez in goal, Shimikas, uh, Shaw, Trent in the back line, Benrama, Mares, Fernandez, Salah in the midfield. Ings, Antonio, and Tony up front. Uh, it's a 3 4 3. As McGovern, uh, Amarte, Veltman, and Brownhill. Um, uh, going through this team, I think he's you know he's got good good places of value. He's got a punch or two. I, I get this team a nine. I think it's uh, he's it's like template. It's template enough, but he's um, but he's taken a, a couple of risks. Um, yeah, I like this team nine. Morris is a sexy pack, isn't he? Yeah, and what what I like about this team, I mean, it, it's interesting that he made he made it work going with two four point I think you know there is there is risk in this team, um, but I think he's making it work. Um, Mares, I don't know. I, I I can see the appeal of Mares. I, I'm afraid he's he's gonna he's gonna link play more than he does anything like in and around the box, um, and that that's something that that I'd like to see first. I prefer like just to start off. I prefer going to one without KDP. Smash like or get out, by the way. Um, I've just put down the ticker for anyone listening. We're at 44 likes. Many a time, Pikachu onesie has come out of 50 likes. Not tonight. But oh, at 1,500 oh. subs, Ali G is coming. I just thought I'd throw that in there. So get us to that 1,500 subs, peeps. Who's next? Let's go to the next one. This next one's mine. Um, so we have uh, at Tony underscore CH underscore um, Anthony. He has a Backman in goal, Trent, Shaw, and Simicas, Barnes, Fernandez, Salah, Rafinha, Mares, Tony, and Antonio, Foster, Veltman, Eiling, Obafemi on the bench. Um, he says that he's kind of got zero million in the bank. He is considering um, kind of Mares, Tony, and a 4.5 forward as he has now versus instead going for Gundogan much cheaper and then upgrading Tony to Ings. Um, and also, oh, sorry, and still keeping Tony. So he wants to upgrade his 4.5 Obafemi to having actually more players. I give this a 7 out of 10. Um, it's good, but I don't really like starting with Rafinha, even though he is a great player. I think he's underpriced. I agree with Hibo that I don't think he's underpriced for the first three. So with that in mind, Mares, he's quite expensive. I think it damages the rest of the team. He's managed to hold it together with Simicas, so you kind of don't notice that there isn't a balance, but the reality is Simicas isn't nailed for long. And as soon as that happens, um, I, I don't like the fact that Barnes is here. He's a 60 to 70th minute man. You've got kind of Dakar's arrived. You've got uh, Vardy and Iannaccio competing. I, I'm not so confident on this draft. So, yeah, that, that's my thinking. Seven out of ten. It's fair enough. Like, yeah. I, 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 a second option where he's talking about Ings. And a four and a half midfielder is probably preferable to me than than Mares, but Chugger Lips is just going to say I'm making everybody's team like my own. So it is true, which is we probably are, um, which is fair. And now we're on to the man himself. So why don't we actually? Um, it's back to you, Hibo. Why don't we get you to do Nick at Nick Trigger Lips, friend of the show, legend of the game, OG oh, of FPL. I'll let you rate his team, and on this one, know, we'll also rate his team. We won't rate your right. rating. You know, he's kind of, people have this impression of him that he's this, like, kind of really crabbed person, but really, like, he's just deep down, I think, makes a big softy. So, he's got goalkeepers, Backman and Foster, Trent Alexander, Samaka, Shaw, Webster and Ailings, his defence, Salah, Son, Marius, Greenwood, and the lesser spotted Billy Gilmore. He's got Ivan Tony, Ings, and Mikel Antonio. Now, what I'm going to say is, I really, really, really like his team. Really, really like his team. And I'm going to give him a nine and a half. If I, if, I, if I could improve it, it would be Mares maybe, but it kind of shows you what you can do without Bruno. Do you know? It kind of shows you what you can do without Bruno. And he's, instead of, say, having Bruno and a real cheap option at midfield, he's gone son of Mares. Now, I do get that there's a certain amount of risk in Mares, but Spurs 
are going to be shaky in defence. They're going to have Norwich up in game week two, so maybe Nick's going to get ahead of the curve here. Nine for me. What do you think, Gabe? What would you give this team? I I, I have to say I kind of agree with Hibble. I, I think the biggest um, criticism of this team is the goalkeeper, uh, okay. especially especially obviously what we've seen in um, in preseason. I, I think you just you have to just play it safe. Just just go with the with the, <laughs> um, you know. I, but that's the only war. That's the only war. So I think I think nine is fair. I really like the Greenwood pack. If I'm being honest, I really 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 like the Greenwood pack. You know, and I know there's been a bit of discussion about Tony Marshall today on Twitter, and he's maybe I think Paddy Q thinks he's maybe going to start the first three games up front. But I would have fancied the Greenwood was going to play right, right wing anyway, and I think he's going to see his minutes boosted by. The lack of Sancho initially and the lack of Rashford. So, no, I, I do. I'm hot in Greenwood, I have to say. Yeah, no, I, I do actually like the Backman pick. I, I know they've had a bad preseason, as we were saying earlier, kind of 10 goals conceded in three games to Premier League opposition. Um, you did mention it wasn't maybe their first kind of choice back line, but this is very different to a team I would have. It's, it's kind of like exactly what my team would be but instead of a bruno and a crap midfielder he has son of Morris, which are both pretty like epic picks mm -hmm. and i'm a template player so that makes me uncomfortable i am the guy who has the players that are high ownership and seeing both son and Morris here at the cost of bruno um it scares me a bit i'm not gonna lie so for me it would be an eight out of ten but it's solely because i'm a very template player and i agree for someone like you gabe where you probably do some more maverick stuff I think you might find this quite an appealing team. Um, so let's go on to the next one. Um, this one's for you, Gabe, another friend of the show. All right, this one's from, uh, this is from uh, at Bagan Boy FPL from our friend Sean. Um, she has Bachman and goal, Trent, Dean, and Tierney in the back, Salah, Saka, Harrison, Fernandez in midfield. Um, sorry, my kids are just getting home from school. <laughs> you can probably hear them. Um, and uh, Ian Acho, Bamford, Antonio um, up front on the bench. He has Foster, Webster, Basuma, and Ailing. Um, let's see. I, I think I think we're dipping. We're dipping with this team, right? Three. No. It scares me. Two. Like, I'm putting Ian Acho. <laughs> Are you giving Harris, him a two? I, I'm giving him a two. You see it's, the double leads, the double, do, like single leads is bad enough, I think, and attack and double leads, leads, I think. Yeah. Ian Ailing. 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 He's not started a single minute in, like, as he's not started one preseason game for Leicester, right? I would not I would, you couldn't back him as a starting forward, like, no way. No, no way. I, D, I don't even I don't even like even his his linchpins right like like Dean I don't I don't think Dean is is, is the greatest pick from even even Saka's, though that's, Saka's that's late as well. Saka's a great pick maybe game week four but he's not going to start game week one it's going to be Obra on that left wing yeah Harris and then he's going to have webs to come yeah. on and like <laughs> yeah no I I get yeah I I rate your review a ten out of ten. <laughs> let's move on to the next one um so i have at fpl flannel another friend of the show so he has sanchez in goal trent chilwell Shaw, and simicas he has salah greenwood sun and Barnes with antonio and ings his bench is gunnarsson rafinha eiling and obafemi he has 0.5 million in the bank and he's also seen the same rumors that i've seen of chilwell missing game week one um at six million him missing game week one that is an easy downgrade i think one million to five million asset kufal or just go straight to a 4.5 um and i think that would then allow him to maybe upgrade someone like barnes to more of like a greenwood or jota or Grealish, someone who i feel is a bit more exciting um barnes is a great pick in isolation but i, I don't know like without having bruno as well this team is a bit risky mm -hmm. for me and I give this a 7.5 out of 10 at most, I reckon. Yeah, fair. Do you just want to skip on the next one, though? Yeah, I'd say actually, until he moves Chilwell, let's make that a 6.5 out of 10. So, <laughs> you can go next. Yeah, so this is Devandra Raj, who, who's big-time friend of the show. So, in, in goal, he's got Sanchez and Foster's his combo there. So, he's got uh, Shaw, Trent Alexander, Kufel, Veltman, and Hoover, the lesser-spotted Hoover. Um, Barnes, Salah, Fernandez, Ben Rama, Jada, Tony, Antonio, and he's got Oba Fembe. As a, uh, obviously, he's going to play the three-five-two. Well, I like that. I'd have to say that's probably for me. It's 
it's probably about an eight. If, I, if I'm being totally honest with you, I do. I take your point in Barnes, but I do actually like Barnes as a pack early. Like you know, I do. Uh, I like their first couple of games, and he's been decent in pre-season. He was unlucky with injuries last year, so I would give him an eight. He's got the new number seven shirt on his back, as you say. He looked electric in the Community Shield. Um, there's nothing wrong with him as a pick. I think I'm just again very template myself, and I'd rather kind of maybe have only two risks or three risks max. And but I kind of think players, I, I kind of yeah. think like this is where like if you're looking at what we're seeing, say in FPL Twitter, and you're looking at the back lane's completely stagnant, the forwards are looking to be completely stagnant, and you've got yeah. maybe two slots I think in midfield. Yeah. <laughs> And it's maybe only two slots in midfield where you're able to differentiate. And I think the like a Barnes, Ben Rama, Ben Rama was like a Twitter pick though. I feel like by game week one, everyone on Twitter is going to have this guy. He's being talked about like he's the next Messi. Like, oh my god. Um, let's mm-hmm. go on to the next team. Um, this one's for you, Gabe. Another friend uh-huh. of the show, TikTok legend, humiliator of FPL Nima. <laughs> this is uh, at FPL underscore Baker. Uh, so Jamie writes in with he has one million in the bank for uh, Mares to Sun, uh, planning an early wild card to the weak bench. And this is his team. He has Sanchez in goal, uh, Shaw, Shimikas, Trent, and Shufal in the back. Um, Salah, Mares, Fernandez, Barnes, Tony, and Ings up front. On the bench, he has Bachman, interesting, um, Amarte, Obafemi, and Brownhill. What would you give this out of 10? 8.5 this is I an like interesting that. team I, I like this team i like i like where he's taking where he's taking some risks i uh, actually old friends of uh, net that hall would uh would laugh to hear me say that i currently have barnes in, in my in my current draft um so i like the barnes and Mars. that's a big turnaround from friday's episode when we mentioned barnes but um yeah aside from that isn't it like a bit worrying having kind of shimikas and Amati both a four mil, having a four point five forward Obafemi, and then a four point five mid Brownhill. Like, do you think he just attacks the first three or four fixtures, and this is a solid eleven, like a ten out of ten eleven? But I, th- I think we're rating him for the bench or anything. Where, where I would criticize him, I, I actually don't mind that with with the wild card. Okay. If he gets things wrong, like he, he says, he's he's willing to to just hit that okay. wild card, and I think that's fine as an approach if that's what you want to do. But I question that he's not consistent in that approach. Because he has Bachman, like what? Well, then if you're gonna go, if you're gonna skimp out in, on your players, on your field players, why are you gonna get five the, on the, the extra point five yeah, on the goalkeeper? That. that part makes no sense. So that you know, that's what dropped it. I think from a nine to an eight point five. Okay, fair. fair I that's think good. I think he's got I think he's got too much risk in there with like Samika, Samardi, Obafembe, and Brownhill. Like you're basically having to play one of those boys every week. And every but, week, but it's, 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 two of them are gonna lose their spot. Dude, they, have, you, they have a million in the, the bank and, and like a 0.5 million extra on the keeper. It just it wouldn't be for me. Yeah. Like. yeah. That, that's yeah, the problem. I, I that's you the gave problem him a very high he's, score. He's, he's got to go to, all in. He's got to go all in on the strategy. I would have given him an easy like 5.5 out of 10, but I won't be harsh. You gave your score. We'll keep No, I, 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 like, I, like that. I like the strategy. I like going like just balls to the wall and smashing into a wild card. I think that could be fun. And could be, it it, it could smells be. of someone who sells Alonso after wild carding him in the week after for a hit. <laughs> no one's safe. Any Nobody, names. Nobody's safe. Yeah, no naming any names. And uh, I don't even know whose fun. turn it is in the rotation, <laughs> but I'll take at FP on Negan. So I want to take this because he actually donated um, £100 charity alongside our $100 donation to the Heart Charity last episode. So he kind of doubled our donation, which is fantastic. Um, he has Backman, Trent, Shaw and Kufal. He has Salah, Fernandez, Jota and Ben Rama, Ings, Antonio and Ian Nacho. His bench is Foster, Livermento, Brownhill and Amity. Um he says be gentle. Um, I think his 11 is great. Ian actually scares me for the minutes a little bit. I feel like at 7.5, the issue there is if he kind of went to Wilson, then you've got a hamstring party. You've got Ings, Antonio and Wilson. So I don't know if that's much better. Like I would have heart palpitations, any of them go down. So let's say he kept Ian Acho with that bench at the moment. It would have to be a 7 out of 10 for me, just solely because... The 11 is solid. Um, if I was only rating the 11, I'd probably give it an 8, 8.5. But seeing Livermento, Brownhill and Amity on the bench kind of scares me with Ian Acho's risks. So, yeah, that that's not for me. But don't know if you guys would give it higher than a 7. Any of you takers out there? No, 7's fair enough. Yeah, sorry. Cool. All right, we'll go to you, 
next, I guess, Hibbert, and then we'll go back to Gabe. Um, we'll get the rotation right again soon, I'm sure. Yeah, so this is Malcolm R. Brown, 53, on Twitter. He's got nothing on the bank. He's interested in Lukaku, so he's, he sides goalkeeper Sanchez and Foster, Stones, Chilwell, Trent Alexander, Shaw, and uh, Ben White. Then he's got Jada Fernandez, Ben Rama, Salah, and Basuma in midfield. Antonio, Angs, and Oba Fembe up front. I would say Oba Fembe is maybe going to be a bit of an issue if he's going to Blackburn. You know then you're going to get zero minutes out of him whatsoever, so I don't think he could stick there. Uh, Antonio Wings is fairly template. I do like a Jada Fernandez. You know what? I do like the Jada pack. I do think I think there's maybe an argument to be made for, look, if you start with Jada, you could maybe jump on a Man City player if you think that somebody's going to eat. But you're pre-booking a transfer, but it could be an aggressive start to the season if you wanted to sprint out of the blocks. But you're probably going to have to sell a Man City player as well at some point. But Stones and Chilwell, ugh, for me, I don't know. It seems like a bit of an investment. We think Chilwell's going to miss game week one. I'm going to probably say six and a half. Seems fair. Um we have also seen Trigger's cat talk about is he the only person with Greenwood because he's not seeing any teams with Greenwood. Um, but no, but what I, do you I think, think it's a great that? I think it's a great point that he's making about Greenwood because like I've looked at teams on Twitter and nobody's really going for Greenwood. And I I looked at him last night and he's maybe four point six percent owned and, and the game at the minute. And like you're looking at that block for Man City in the first six games, and then from game week seven, their schedule obviously turns the absolute dog shit, and you don't want them from then. But like if you're looking at that early block, I think you look at his minutes and the what he's expect them could increase by and think you know what I'm going to roll a dice for him for him six games and see what happens keep him on the slot worst comes the worst he's always a threat off a of bench but no, so I haven't got that at the moment but um, yeah no I'm looking at Greenwood instead as an option and I feel like if I went Greenwood I would just keep him for a while at least till after the first international break um, I am going to let you go next game but in that time I'm going to disappear so try to prolong this while I get a <laughs> refill please okay this is from uh, at FPL Gannon Tech on Twitter. He's got zero in the bank. He's concerned about Jota rotation and do we trust Watford defense? Um, I was on ba he he has uh, Bachman in the back, uh, Shaw, Shofal, and Trent, uh, Hafinha, Fernandez, Salah, and Jota, Ings, Antonio, and Tony. Um, you know, look, looking through this team, it's a uh, it seems pretty pretty safe, pretty reasonable. Yeah, give this this eight and a half just just because uh, just Bachman is, is is a concern for me. Um, just what I've seen, I don't I don't think the saves are going to be <laughs> are going to be enough to account for for what they concede. So I would be I would play it safe um, at, at this point. I, I prefer that, but um, I think this. Enough, is I, th I think template enough. I think it's a good kind of damage limitation side. I know there's maybe some people go under the season with this today that they want to be kind of fairly template so that they don't get absolutely hammered early doors. And I think this kind of looks like one of these sides where I would agree with you, apart from, say, Backman and Foster, I, I don't really know. Look, he could turn out to be the star performing goalkeeper. I'm just kind of tempted to go Sanchez and I'm thinking I could just keep my goalkeeper right in my wild card. Like, you know, at the end, I want to have two bites at the cherry in terms of the goalkeeper myself. I tend to get it right at least the second time, you know. But the, the only other opinion I would have here is Rafinha. I don't like the early fixtures for Leeds. And I do think, as I've said previously, you could punt those slats in midfield. So you're looking, say, there, Rafinha and Jada. And you could have maybe somebody else on there along the lines of maybe Greenwood or Harvey Barnes or somebody, I think. That, that, that could be a real nice differential they add with Jara in the early kind of period. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I do find it interesting that they didn't go with the, uh, that, that they went with the double Liverpool attack, uh, which makes sense actually per the per the FDRs that we saw with, uh, with Mariners FDRs. So um, I, like, I like that approach. Nice one. Um, so I've got my refill. I'm back. Sorry about that. <laughs> Dar is watching. I was hoping he wouldn't be here for that moment, but... <laughs> So we're on at Enthusiast FPL on Twitter. Um, they have Sanchez, Trent, Shaw, and Simicas. They have Salah, Fernandez, Greenwood, Mares, and Rafinha. They have Antonio and Tony with a bench of Steel, Ailing, Amati, and Obafemi. Zero million in the bank. Um, so I just want to give a shout out to um, at Enthusiast FPL actually because they are a fellow contributor at All About FPL, a writer from Kerala where my wife's family are from. So. When I do visit one day and have my Indian wedding in the temple, I'll be sure to hit you up, bro. Now, 
that was me buttering you up before I give you a solid 7.5 out of 10. Uh, <laughs> the reason just for me there is I don't like the double 4 million defense to Amity and Simicast. I don't like that there's then a 4.5 million forward in Obafemi there. Um, I am quite keen on the Salah Fernandez Greenwood Mores midfield. I think that is quite sexy actually. So I do like that element. That's kind of what scored you up. But starting with Rafinha is not for me. Um, I'd rather move on to him later. And that is kind of what brought the score down alongside the cheaper assets around. But um, I will move on to the next team then. So now we circle back to you. Hey, yeah, so we've got FPL Noble Gent off Twitter. He's got nothing on the bank. And in terms of his goalkeepers, he's got Sanchez and Steele, Trent, Shaw, Mings, who we haven't seen yet, Kufal, and Ben White. And then in midfield, we've got Jara Sala, Fernandez, and Buemo. And the lesser spot of Billy Gilmore, we've got Ings, Tony, and Jimenez. Look, if I had to read it, I would probably read it as six. Jimenez, I, I would be a bit wary of starting with him. I know the fixtures improve from around about game week four and game week five. Tyrone Mings, he's probably trying to mitigate some of the risk, I suppose, from Martinez, but if it was me, well, I know personally myself, I'm just backing against fall defence completely and just hoping that it'll come out on top. Um, yeah, the rest of it's fairly tempered. Six. Yeah, and Buem, just, just sorry, triggered uh, Kat, sorry, yeah, he's, saying, he's saying that if you do have the two four million defenders, you probably do need to play a four four three and have a playing 4.5 mid, and I think that's what broke down the last team, where they had Obafemi instead, and that's not a playing player. He's being sold, right? So yeah, I I, I, I completely agree. We trigger like you know I think people are. I think he needs three four three by the way. Three four three. People are getting sucked on. They trying to get as much money on the pitch as they possibly can, but you still need to have like some kind of mark a balance in your side. And I think if if people are going for a non-playing forward and they're going two four mil defenders, it's just the wheels could fall off all the year. What if one of your midfielders is dropped on top of it? You're just Next thing, Robbo's pictured walking on the Melwood training ground. You're up to shit. Just <laughs> let's go I, to. Uh, I, I, I like that we, we saw Mbomo for the first time there. Yeah, that's a good yeah. shout out for Mbomo and Gilmore, yeah. as you said, the lesser scene. Yeah, I don't think I would double on Brentford attack if I'm being totally honest with you. Like I know he's probably going to keep him as a bench player, but he's expensive for a bench player. And Bumo's five five. He's on he's on corners from his side. He'll play up top when when Brentford go to a go to a three five two, which uh, which they did in their their previous um, in the previous friendly. It, so I don't know. I, I think I think he's interesting. He at could five, be five. one of the better five point fives. I think as the season goes on, but the fact that we're all kind of starting with Tony, I guess it means it's a bit much doubling up on a promoted uh, team as attacking yeah. as it may be. Wouldn't be wouldn't be for me. Like I we look at all them five point five mills and like you could hide a dead body and amongst them and you wouldn't be able to find it like you know because nobody's lo- nobody's looking at the five point five mills because they're all yeah. terrible really like pretty much. Um so we have a at FPR underscore United underscore twenty. Um they have Sanchez, Trent Shaw and Kufal. They have Salah, Fernandez, Barnes and Rafinha, Antonia Ings and Tony. Their bench is Foster, Simicast, Brownhill, and Ailing. 0.5 million in the bank. Um, I really like this team. Um, I like the starting 11. I like what they've done with the balance of this team. I feel like if any of the assets kind of pop off the 6.5 mil midfielders, any of the 7.5 mil midfielders, or any of the strikers, they can easily just with one transfer get to any of those assets. And if one of theirs fails, it's an easy transfer away. So for me, this is an 8 out of 10. Um, the reason it's not higher is solely because um, of starting with kind of Rafinha. And I'd rather wait till later for him. And on top of that, in my opinion, if you've got Simicas, I'd rather just kind of have him in the 11. So to have him and not start him and take away that Liverpool spot, I'd rather turn Rafinha or Barnes into Jota. Um, and not have Simicast at all in this team, and then, then there'll be a 9 out of 10 for me in that scenario. That's the kind of change I would make to it. Um, moving on to, I think it's back to Hibo and then Gabe, um, but definitely going in the wrong way, but <laughs> I'll let you go, Hibo. So this is my team here, so this is Ad Vardy boys dragged down from Twitter. So in terms of his goalkeepers, Sanchez and Ward, Stone, Shaw, Simicast, Chilwell, and he's got Ailing, Salah Fernandez, Mares, Ben Rama, and Smith Rowe. Angs and Antonio and Obafembe again. I'm probably going to give it a six. Smith Rowe, I'm not dying about him. Um, he comes in that category of 5.5. 5. 
muds. That I just think there's too much risk attached. You know, I just the minutes would always be a concern for me. Stones and Chilwell again. I don't really, I don't really like that kind of combination of both of those are kind of risky defenders. Then you're adding Simic as the mix, who's also risky. It's just, it's just too much risk built on that for me. Like, I, I, no, I think you, you're right on. Um, on that note, we're on 48 likes, guys. Help us get to 50. Um, we do appreciate all the love. Um, if you're one of the assholes who disliked it before and you're still here, then you must really like us to come back every week and click dislike. So I appreciate your support, bud. Um, in terms of Vardy, next... sorry, in terms of Vardy yeah. boys team, so he, he's put a question in, so he's saying about Trent in a four and a half or Chilwell and Stones. I would go Trent in a four and a half there all day long. Yeah. Do you know? I, yeah, I wouldn't have Trent out of my team um, to start with Chilwell and Stones. It just feels a bit much. What do you think about Wallach as a pack at six million? We have been asked why he's not in any drafts. I guess people haven't heard he signed for Newcastle. He could be interesting. Like, you know, you're looking at the six mil muds and we're looking at the five and a halves and we're, we're, we're saying there's not much on that kind of range. And his minutes are going to be good. He showed well last year when he played. So He's on a, a streak, isn't he? So I think if he scores like maybe, is it five or six more goals in a row? he will overtake Vardy's record of most consecutive Premier League games scored in. Um, he's on eight consecutive Premier League games scored in. A few more and bang, there goes the record, <laughs> lads. What a fucking stat. What a stat. Yeah, I know. You like I might talk shit a lot of the time, but some of the numbers <laughs> I pull out my arse, no one's ever heard of. Um, Did you just make that up? No, no, it's a fact. Um, I remember <laughs> I picked him because you know that week when we both play fan team and you won £200 and I won £60? I had Willock. That was the week we went heavy on uh, Newcastle. Right. We had like double Newcastle defence, banging Willock. He was a budget option. Um, uh, that's a week at AZ done well as well. If I had a pack the AZ, I think I would have won. You would have won a few grand, mate. Okay, <laughs> hell. I, I, just time. Think, I just think Ben Rama and, and Socek are both um, better picks at that price. Ben Rama. Yeah, I guess to start with at least. Um, but for with. me, for me, I'd rather say have Willock than maybe Wilson at one and a half million more, where mm-hmm. Willock is less injury prone. Um, and Newcastle do have great opening fixtures. Um, I'd have to hear he's definitely starting game week one, though. Um, I've got a friend of ours, Gabe, not that like we know him, but we're very uh, much relating on the at FPL Kush here. I only put his <laughs> team in because of his name. <laughs> that's uh congratulations on getting in on on, on that one at fpl kush uh F, F, all he says is zero zero in the bank <laughs> <laughs> all right uh they, he has uh bachman and gold shimikas feltman shaw and trent in the back line uh sala hafinha son fernandez ings and antonio up front um on the bench foster ailing brownhill and obafemi Again, we have a 4.5 non-playing um, forward, which I'm, I don't have a problem with that personally. So I, I think it's fine. You have some depth in ailing. Um, this, I like this. I like this team. I like that. I like them going. Uh, I like I like the Sun pick from the very beginning. I think I think Sun can return against City. Um, again, you, you mentioned the Hafinha thing about getting Hafinha later. I do agree with that. So I'll knock it off a, a little bit for that. So I'll give it a, an 8.5. Do you, know what I like about the, do you know what I like about this team? The fact that they've managed to get Son, Salah and Fernandes in. And it, it still looks as if it's got a reasonable bit of balance. I know they've got Samakas on there, but you could play two, and a, two four and a halves and, and, a, and, a, and a four, four, two. You could realistically play Brown Hill. You obviously can't play Obafembe, so you're kind of pack them out of the four, four, two. But as long as you were happy for it in the short term, it's, it's maybe not the worst. Like. Four, four, two is the formation I do love. Um, no, no qualms there. Um, on to kind of then at FPL underscore Safa. So it is Kevin Rose, another friend of the show. He had an incredible season last year. Yeah, he did really well. Yeah, I think at one point his live rank was in the top 100. Um, it was insane, right? Definitely. Who's so, this? Is yeah, so so his team is, um, yeah, I'll go with this one. So it is Martinez in goal, Trent, Shaw, Dean, Veltman, Salah, and Mane with Barnes and Greenwood, Ings and Antonio. He has Foster, Amity, Gilmore, and Davis on the bench. Uh, the much loved Keenan Davis and zero million in the bank. Um, this is a very interesting team. Um, it is very different to what I would do. I do love the Salamone double up. I barely see that on any draft at the moment. 
in that Norwich game, um, I can see the reason you might want to just go gung ho. Like maybe it's five nil. Maybe they assist each other. My question for him would be: Is there a plan to move Mane on game week two? Because if there isn't, then I would bring the score down. If I thought he was bringing Mane to someone else afterwards, then maybe I would give it a eight point five out of ten. If he's intending on keeping Mane through that good spell of fixtures for Liverpool. I would drop it down to about seven and a half out of ten, just because I'm not so kind of keen on spending five point five on the goalkeeper. But again, that's a personal preference, um, and I'm not quite so sure about kind of having Davis, Gilmore, and Amity because from those three, like I wouldn't really want to play any of them. Well, Davis, you definitely can't play, and Amity won't have his spot forever. And Gilmore has some pretty terrible fixtures for the first few, so. I think as an 11, it's great, but you have to kind of downgrade Mane in game week two and use those funds to strengthen the rest of the team, in my opinion. There's a, there's a bit of a point. There was a point in the chat there about who you would captain and say game week three, because I know obviously he's got two premium Liverpool players and they're going to play Chelsea at home. And I, I, I think like West Ham have got Crystal Palace at home in game week three. Could you captain Antonio? She's a bit well risky. Like. You could captain Greenwood if he's still in the team against Wolves in game week three, I guess. Um, Rusky, Rusky as well. Like yeah, it's, but that's why I feel like if you sold Mane, then, then I'd be like, oh, okay, like you've got a plan and there's someone else coming in. It, yeah. it strengthens the team, I think. This is actually, um, I, I will just shout out his name and I'll let one of you review him so there's no bias. But at uh, London underscore Liam, LDN, um, we actually go to the Arsenal games together. He's the only person in my network on the Arsenal membership. So when either of us go to ticket release on the ticket platform, we're allowed to buy two tickets and assign one of them to the other person. Um, so I'm hoping to go to the Norwich and Spurs game with him. He can't come to the Chelsea game, sadly, but lots of love for him. He's in a money league with me, so try and throw him as best you can on his draft because I want to win. Ooh, right. Arsenal friends. Yeah. <laughs> we used to work together too. So his uh, he has Sanchez in goal, Trent, Beltman, Shaw back three, Hafinha, Salah, Fernandez, and Grealish in uh, midfield four. Antonio, Tony, and Ings in a front three. Foster, Douglas, Luis, interesting. Um, Ailing and Omobami Deli um, on the bench. Score, please. Score. Yeah, I know you just want the score. You <laughs> I don't know how low I'm gonna go here. Um, five. Give us wow. a five. It's, it's it's too much. I mean, Grealish is is just too big of a risk and too much money. I find. Um, I find the odd you'd give us a five because I'd say Bar Grealish is probably the entire Twitter template. Yeah. Well, there's there's the there's the Rafinha, right? R getting Rafinha there, early. There is that. Yeah. If if he got rid of him, then yeah. So, I can so see. double Brighton defense. I don't like that. Um. Doug. We're gonna curse official FPL later, but we'll come to that. <laughs> um, so, so I, I don't know. I, I think there are there are several holes here, and and they're stemming from the money that's being kind of wasted on Grealish. So that's why I'm, I'm knocking it down so much for that Grealish because he's just sucking potential FPL points from the rest of the team. I think Grealish could be a great pick, but I think we've got time to wait and see. I know we've got Norwich yes. game week two. He could do really well against Norwich, don't get me wrong, but I know the fixtures turn a lot from like kind of game week seven or game week eight. I think by that stage we could see maybe how more settled he is in the team compared to, say, the Gundigans of the world or, you know, Foden was whenever he was there. I think Grealish is going to get a lot of minutes, if I'm being totally honest with you. I think it's an easy seven out of ten for me, but if Rafinha was changed, it could even go up to an eight, in my opinion. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if we'll, we'll ever have clarity of um, who's going to start when on that left wing because there's so much competition for it. And Pep doesn't really care about preseason minutes. He believes the likes of, say, Walker and Sterling are kind of elite and have infinite fitness and don't need minutes to be ready. So he, he's the kind of guy who just throw them in in game week one and give them no preseason. Um, so I agree with you there. Um, Let's go to you then, Hibbo, I guess. Um, so this is at Mukherjee, LSD, another name that I picked just solely because of his name. Yeah, so we'll just run through his team. So in terms of his goalkeepers, he's got Martinez and Gaeta. He's got Trent, Kuffel, Webster, Vestigard, Regulon. He's got Zaha, Son, Salah, Barnes, Rafinha, Hamanez, Tony, and Pookie. I'm giving this boy a two. I don't give a shit. Um <laughs> 
No, I'm sh- no, no, I'm sorry. He's got he's got a he's got a five and a half and a four and a half keeper, which is like is that ten million spent in goalkeepers? Hey, he's not. Uh, he's, he's more. Vestergaard, what? Why why do you Vestergaard Re- Regulon? Regulon Zah- on the bench. Zaha's Zah- oh. Zah- got like Gookie the worst fixtures. on the fix- bench. Zaha's oh. got the worst fixtures in the game. Pookie's got some of the worst fixtures in the game. Uh, Jimenez, he's all right. You know, don't get me wrong. He can have his stride and have a big season, but I wouldn't pack him out of the blocks. No, I'm giving this to you out of 10. A lot of work to be done. This is definitely going to be clipped. That's two out of 10. Do you suppose not agree? I give it a one, but um, I'm sorry. (laughs) Please come back and watch this show again. I'd give it a two because the the name actually matches the team. LSD. LSD. Yeah, Yeah, I thought so. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I genuinely like obviously saying Zaha's had a good preseason and stuff, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. We lost at least like ten viewers, but five more joined in the meantime. So <laughs> let's hope we don't offend the next five. Um, <laughs> on to the next team. So this one would be for me at Al underscore Chanos. Uh, so this is he's got Sanchez and Foster in goal, Trent Shaw, Amity Dyer and Obafemi, Salah Fernandez, Jota Ben Rama and Barnes. Antonio Wilson and Obafemi. He has 1.5 million in the bank to upgrade to a Man City mid. And I don't quite know what this question, the last point was, but he said fifth mid is a differential over budget attackers. So I'm assuming he means that kind of Ben Rama or Barnes, maybe one of those two, is his differential as opposed to most of the template having a first striker where he's got Obafemi. I think that's what he means. Um, Seeing Dyer in here, it just offends me. You got unlucky at uh, our channels. <laughs> if the other two were reviewing you, they might have been more nonchalant. But seeing Dyer at 4.5, it, it, it just offends me. So it's a 6 out of 10 from me. I don't think you can have Dyer and Marty, Oma Bamba, Dele, and Oma Fembe, to be honest with you. I think maybe as they look at the spread, he, need, he needs maybe another 4.5 million defender at least. You also you also can't roll with Antonio and Wilson. That's they have like two legs between them that like each of them has been down and out in preseason at some point <laughs> yeah you're being generous with that sex uh, yeah i thought i'd be nice because they actually shared it. stuff about sos iran earlier so thank you for that mm. and please do like the show and don't click dislike there there are many ways to earn points here on the on the rate my team <laughs> no if you just go back to his team a minute Nima, like you know what what i what i would say about him is he's got one and a half million in the bank and he's talking about an upgrade to say a man said he mud i get the one and a half million in the team or at least if he wants to keep a half a million in the bankers hand that's grand but like see people talking about keeping more money than that in the bank it's, i don't not if you're rolling me a murder and i saw fun. someone with five million in the bank i think they come up later um, another friend of the show i don't want to offend them just yet <laughs> who wants this one i'll throw it at one of you i'll, I'll take this one. go on ahead you take a go game go. all right this is that uh... Uh, from at waterproof PL or or waterproof FPL, whatever you, however you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. It's spelled waterproof FPL. So waterproof. This is from waterproof. Um, Sanchez and go White, Bertrand and Shaw on the at the back. Salah, Barnes, Fernandez, Jota, Greenwood, Ings, Antonio up front, Foster, Regilon, Shofal, Obafemi. Do they just not have time to maybe set their lineup? I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna take it as a block instead of uh, what what's what's in front of me. And uh, as a block, wow, I don't know. There's some questions here. Huh? I, I don't know. I, I just I guess I don't understand the perspective when when looking at their defenders. Um, Jesus, just don't <laughs> see where they're. I just don't see where they're coming from. So I'm, I'm gonna give them a six just to kind of like get rid of them because I, I'm short circuiting. I haven't seen Bertrand in about five years. Well, but Bertrand, I mean, he, he was brought in because, um, uh, what's his name? Luke, was it Luke, Luke Thomas? He's not, he, was, was it Luke Thomas? I, right? I don't know. Playing the left side last oh, season. Wait, is is Castagna a left back? Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Castagna has yeah. been injured and he can yeah. play yeah. cover. Yeah, Castagna can play, Castagna can play both sides, but I was oh. just... Actually, it would have been if, if I had done my Leicester, my Leicester stats. So Leicester, Leicester are particularly weak on the left hand side, um, and and I think they brought in Bertrand to kind of shore shore that up. Um, so, so 
yeah, I don't know. I just a six to get rid of it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my issue is I've just realized that Chris No actually replied to me with a new team because I asked him how many um how much money he had in the bank and I never actually put his new screenshot in, I don't think. So I'm gonna read out the team he has now and rate it and then on Twitter I'll reply to your most recent version. So he has Sanchez, Trent Shaw, Tieni and Kufal. Salah, Fernandez, and Mares, Ings, Antonio, and Tony with Foster, Amity, Brownhill, and Gilmore on the bench. What are we thinking here, lads, on this current team? And while you give a little bit of chat, I might try to see if I can find what he's changed. What he's got looks kind of fairly template, if I'm being honest. Like Tierney at 5 million, I probably wouldn't start with him given the first three for Arsenal. The strikers are just completely template. Salah, Mares, Fernandez. Marez obviously is attached with a bit of risk, but no, I, th- I think it's okay. Like if uh, if I was change anything, if I was going to be constructive and change anything, it would probably maybe be Tierney. I'm just going to put his team on the screen real quick. So this is wow. his actual team. He says he's that, changed Tierney then. Yeah, he's changed Simicas in for Tierney, and Tony has then been upgraded to Wilson. That's the slight difference. Mm. Scroll down, sorry, name a wee minute. Yeah, so Tierney's I, become Simicas and. Tony has become Wilson. The rest he's of the team is the same. He's got the two four million defender thing, which you know, makes me want to puke. Like I like this guy, you know, but I don't know. It's it's asking for trouble. <laughs> I think I, I think just have one of them. Like you know, it's I saw people actually saying on Twitter um, yesterday and today, does Samakas and three and a half million cover Trent? <laughs> I can't believe this conversation, but uh, no, but there was no, but there was there was a credible account saying this that I kind of thought there's lots I, of credible accounts. Let's not name and shame them. I, I think they all should have been given a Twitter ban, like some kind of temporary <laughs> ban. I think so. Um, on to the next one because there are fifty to get through, and I think we're doing quite well actually. We're we're on thirty four out of fifty nine, so we're doing fast. We're going through fast. Um, at Paxo FPL, Dave Paxton. Um, they have Sanchez, Trent, Shaw, and Kufal, Salah, Fernandez, Jota, Rafinha. Wilson, Ings, Tony with Foster, Brownhill, Amity and Eiling on the bench. Zero million on the bank. They want to know what we think as a crew about changing Tony to a 4.5 million forward and then upgrading Brownhill. So what would we score this out of 10 and would you downgrade Tony to save 2 million and upgrade Brownhill to a 6.5 midfielder instead? It's up to you. They scored. We're not allowed to score. I give it a solid... Based on that, just 11 in front of me, um, I, I give that a 7 out of 10. I would give it an 8 out of 10 if he was to um, maybe consider changing Rafinha, I reckon. That's kind of my only qualm with this team. What if he went the way of losing Tony and upgrading Brownhill? He, he would I, would actually six go down. I would actually go I, down. I would go down too. I'd go down. I wouldn't go up. Yeah, I'd give it a worse score. So we have someone here, um, and this is not Chris Turner at FPL Mariner, I promise. Um, he's actually at Mariner FI. And he's also a Up the Mariners UTM fan. Grimsby up Town the, for life. Up the fucking Mariners, boys. Up so uh, Mariners. What, what, what we'll say here is he's got Sanchez and Gunn, he's got Trent Feltman, Samakas Ailing, and Oma Bamba Deli, Salah Son, Rafinha Barnes, Douglas Luis, Ings, Vardy, and Antonio. I haven't seen Vardy in a single draft tonight. What I would say is he's talking about Vardy as a placeholder for Lukaku. I don't like the early Chelsea fixtures, if I'm being totally honest with you. I, I, if it was me personally, I would back the fixtures and kind of think, well, Lukaku, I can maybe get him down the lane. Or if he comes out and he's really firing outside of the blocks. But Vardy could go all right. What I would say about this team is he's got the Samakas on my Daily thing, which... I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not buying about it. Like, I, like, I think, I, I think people need to move away from that because they try and be as constructive as possible. Like, you know, you're basically stuck. If these boys go bust, you're basically stuck playing Luke Ealing in the short term, and I, I don't really know how how reliable he is as a week on week out starter in your defence. Like, you know. No, I agree. Um, let's keep it moving. Um, this one's for you, Gabe. This is uh, at FPL underscore Robin Hood. For- Certainly, friend of the show. <laughs> definitely, it's, definitely. Exactly, it's all we stand yeah. for. Like, <laughs> they, may not, <laughs> they may not. They may not know it, but they're a friend of the show. Um, they have zero, zero million in the bank. It's Sanchez, uh, Trent, Shaw, and Shofal in the back. Um, midfield four of Hafinha, Fernandez, Salah, and Barnes. A front three of Ings, Tony, and Antonio. 
uh, bench of Foster, White, Ailing, and Brownhill. Again, mostly template. Again, the, the Hafinha, maybe you can go in a different direction and get Hafinha later. Um, but mostly template, you know, solid eight and a half or something. Eight and a half. Okay, I think any players that we've discussed before will signpost people to go back and listen to the part where we talked about it because I think we just got a rattle through yep. a score out of 10 now. Cool. Then we can get to the live Q&A where it gets even more exciting. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I still have drinks left by then. We're catering to our Eastern audience. It's 8 a.m. out in the Far East. So thank you for tuning in. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're enjoying your breakfast, people. Um, I'll take this one at FPR underscore clinician. They have Backman, Shaw, Trent, Kufal, Salah, Greenwood, Sun, Buendia, and Rafinha with Tony and Vardy. They have a Foster, Ailing, Simicas, and Obafemi on the bench. 0.5 million in the bank. They're monitoring the Buendia fitness and the Lukaku news. I imagine Vardy is a placeholder for Lukaku. Um, like, it's a nice team. Um, I, I don't like that Buendia is there, considering that he did not start the last game and he wasn't even on the bench. And I don't like Rafinha's fixtures. If he intends on keeping Vardy while waiting for Lukaku, then suddenly this is like a straight 4 out of 10 for me because it's just... I, I can't live with this. Like, there's a tough fixture for Rafinha. Buendia didn't start. There's no Bruno. Son has a bad game with one fixture. I don't really like Vardy at this point in time. So, yeah, that, that, that's a solid 4 out of 10 for me. Um, I, I'm not... Yeah, I'm, I, I think in terms of being... What's the word? Uh, constructive. Constructive, yeah. <laughs> Instead of just slaughtering the team. Um, if I was being constructive, um, I would probably change Rafinha, I'd say, to a 6 mil, someone like a Ben Rama. Um, I would move Buendia to... I, I'm trying to think who I would go for, but I'd like kind of anyone who is starting, for one. So there's that. And Vardy, I'd probably downgrade him to an Antonio to get more funds. And I think so that would balance the team The Buendia up. thing is just, just because of injury, right? We, we do expect him to, to start. It, it, it is, but equally, I started to think to myself, the whole kind of Villa front line has changed. It might take some time for them to click. We've talked about the free fixtures being great, but on FPL Mariners, FDR, it's not as great as it may first seem. And I don't really like booking in that early transfer. If I was going to go for someone from Villa, and this kind of brings up a question we've had in the live chat, is they said, why is everyone so hot on Ings? If I was going to have someone, it would be Ings. Um, and there's a reason we're hot on him, because when his leg hasn't fallen off, he is capable of a 200-point season. So I, I kind of take Ings over Buendia, who probably won't even start again with one. Um, I'm going to let you guys move on to the next one. So we'll let Hibbo take this and then back to you, Gabe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is made in blue. So <clears throat> Sanchez, Shaw, Kufel, Trent, Greenwood, Salah, Mare, Son, Jada, Ivan Tony, and Ings. And then the bench, he's got Foster, Amarte, Leverlamento, and Oba Fembe. At, he's basically as a non-existent bench is what I'm going to say. Like you know, like not like <laughs> none of the four basically not will play apart from a Marty might play some early minutes. So if I was going to try and be constructive about this, I would maybe chop some money down and maybe put an extra half mil on the one of those defenders. And I think the obvious point to do it is Kuffel down the 4.5 option, Veltman maybe, and and although you're double. You're double Brighton then. Maybe he doesn't want to do that. But he could put the extra half million on the defence. I do like, as much as there's a lot of risk in it, I do like the Jada greenwood Morris thing. I do, I do think it looks like a bit of a powerhouse midfield, like, if I'm being honest. I, I like well. this. Yeah, I like this. Um, one thing I want to ask you guys before we move on to the next I'll give, I'll, give him, I'll give him an eighth on, eight. on the basis that if he took Kufel down and he upgraded somebody else, one of his defenders, so a 4.5 yeah. 4 instead of a 5 and a 4. That would make it a lot stronger, yeah. I think I just want to mention that. So Jake Scott saying double defense is being bad or a myth. Um, I, I don't know why double defense would be bad. In fact, I think double defense is like a very common theme of like high risk, high reward players. So someone like a Pernil, a laterizer, friend of the show, hopefully a guest soon. Um, I'm sure he would agree. And both of us here, when we played fan team, it was all about kind of stacking, wasn't it? Uh, defense for one team. It's very much about stacking, and whenever we played, say, fan team, the, the the weekly monsters, there's actually a penalty built under the weekly monsters and the scoring. So if you stack two defenders from the one team, you pay a penalty on the second defender, and this is because 
theoretically, I suppose it's easier to call one clean sheet than it does to call two yeah. independent clean sheets. And, and if you had three of them, you'd take two penalties. So, <laughs> so it's, it's something that I wanted to kind of integrate under my FPL this year was at least maybe have kind of one stack defence. Just to see uh, how it goes. People like, used to do it all the time, right? Like the Robbo Trent double up. Mm -hmm. That was such a common theme of the good old days. And because of like their Burnley, form Burnley last year, up, for example, Burnley the double the up in the Burnley double game week. Yeah, yeah Aston, Villa, game week Aston Villa last right? season as well. Like, you know, there's yep. you do see it whenever it's a good defense and they're cheap, like doubling up on them. It can be the way to go. And obviously, in FPL, we don't have the stacking penalty that you do in like a five. So it's even more worthwhile doing it, right? Yeah, it's, like, even, it's even more worthwhile doing yeah. I, I do. I did, did want to mention something about uh, Bruno reinvestment. That you know, we've seen that the Bruno list, uh, the Bruno drafts, right? Um, and and you know, it's the the way that money can be reinvested. Um, you know, I want to get your your guys' thoughts on say, um, I don't know, Bruno and Harvey Barnes versus Son and Mars. If that works out, I don't know if that works out. If that works uh, out. You so. shouldn't ask me. I'll just keep telling you to go Bruno and Harvey Mars. Like I said, I'm a template player. I can downgrade yeah. Bruno to any midfielder in the world. How about in, in, I, just, I, in, I in a vacuum? Just in, in a vacuum. Forget the template. Do you, do you know what I? Do you know what I think? I think people are doing Bruno about at that service, and I think. <laughs> I can just take one game and like we see it all the time. He scores a he scores a penalty in the ninety fifth minute. He ends up in ten plus points, and you know your rank just goes through the absolute floor in live FPL. And I just I, I don't want to build that kind of anxiety on the Saturday three pm. I'd rather that, have Salah and Bruno and differentiate him the rest of my team. That's my yeah. mentality. Well, I, I don't, I'd also say that the fact that we have players like Harvey Barnes that present some decent value at that point also strengthens uh, you know the brew brew yes crowd. Yes, argument. I think so. Um, on to this one then. So I, 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 I it's too many fucking letters. Um, <laughs> let me refill my beer for this one. Um, I really need it. Um, at on um, at I underscore M I underscore F I underscore. Why so many underscores, bro? FPL insights. I love the name. I don't like the handle. Um, a fellow all about FPL contributor too. So shout out to another fantastic account. Um, they have Sanchez and Meslier. So again, already I'm a little bit concerned about the spend the money in goalkeepers. We have a uh, Trent Shaw, Simicas, Amity, and Veltman. We have Salah, Fernandez, Greenwood, Barnes, and Buendia. Calvert, Lewin, Tony, and Obafemi. They have 0.5 million in the bank. To be fair to them, they've said if Buendia is not past fit. Um, same as DCL, they will change that to Saar and Ings. So already I'm just going to assume they're not past fit and score you based on owning Saar and Ings because you do not want to hear why I would score you without that. And um, he also asks about Trent and Shaw um, and he's going to then rotate Voltman and Amity as kind of, I guess, a third and he's going to start Simicas as a fourth. So I think this is very much a 4-4-2, like a similar team we saw earlier where... Simicast always starts and Veltman and Amity rotate. That scares me. So even with Saar and Ings, that's still a 6.5 out of 10 for me. Um, I don't like that Veltman and Amity are four Miller being rotated and Simicast starts every week. That That is a fire waiting to happen. Yeah, see in rotation, like the one thing I suppose I've learned during the years in the FPL, rotation falls in its arse the second somebody has not nailed on. So like if you're looking to have any kind of defensive rotation, you need to be looking at boys that are very durable and guaranteed minutes, and it wouldn't really be the case here. I'm just telling Chris uh, at FBO Negan that he missed his RMT, so <laughs> when the show goes live later, you can look back and hopefully you like the score we gave you. But thank you again for the contribution. So we're on a, on a funny, very weird coincidence. The next person is at FPL Egan, not Negan. <laughs> this is Ryan. I'll hand this over to you here, but... Yeah, Ryan, he's actually in a group chat with me. Um, nice guy. So he's got Sanchez, Shaw, Veltman, Trent, Arnold, Fernandez, Salah, Barnes, Ben Rama, Marez, Tony, Ings, Foster, Amarty, Obafembe, and Ailing. I do like it if I'm being honest with you. Like, you know, I know it's very fairly template, but he's got Barnes and Ben Rama are two differentials. Strike force and the defence are obviously fairly template. Um I'd probably give it an eight, if I'm being honest. It's question he's talking about Ben Rama versus Saar. I would go for Ben Rama to start. He's on about Greenwood, Greenwood and Kafal versus Shaw and Barnes. 
I would probably go Sean Barnes. I would, I would definitely want Shaw, if I'm being honest. Nima, your mic's off. I was going to say, I, I agree. I think Shaw, he's over 50% owned. He's the most owned player in the game. And people are talking about him kind of not getting clean sheets. They're actually United fans telling us that. And there's a good saying I say to you all. Don't listen to the fucking fans of a club. They don't know about FPL. That's that's just the frank truth here. Because I'm sorry, like we saw we saw Shaw's assist um, to Maguire in the box. We saw OGS's interview. Maguire is someone who normally doesn't kind of get the right header on. He always has the first header either fly straight over the bar or it goes across the box and there's no one to take the second header to shoot. He scored that goal and OGS said, I am asking Maguire to up his goal tally this season. He's been asked to improve it. Him and Shaw have a chemistry that's come from England. They didn't train those set pieces for United. They trained them at England. And I just was like, unfortunate that they already have this pre-built chemistry from their England times. So for me, at 5.5, he's underpriced. And United fans trying to convince us that they're not going to keep clean sheets, so we shouldn't own Shaw when he's like the most owned player in the game. They're lying to you, lads. They have him in their team. So on to the next one. <laughs> This is uh this is from at FPL Robots with a Z. <laughs> um, he says uh, he has a uh, Sanchez, Shaw, Dunk, Trent, and Rudiger. Interesting Rudiger there. Uh, in a back four, midfield four of Jota, Salah, Greenwood, and Bruno Fernandez, and a front two of Ings and Antonio. His bench is Foster, Amerte, uh, Gibbs, White, and Oba Obafemi. Um, looking at this team, you know, you, you have to question if, uh, you know, if, if it's the right time to go in on a, on a player like Rudiger, I, I can understand the appeal like with, with the right fixtures, I guess, um, the right fixtures, he could maybe get into some bonus at five, five, but I, I wouldn't have him to start. I think, I think you can invest that money better elsewhere. Um, he doesn't have a defense. He doesn't have a bench. Sorry. Yeah. The, so the, the you, again we're, we're back to like it, it seems to be like people have kind of shifted quite hard on the on the 4.0s just like a little sniff of a, of a 4.0 um, which was a kind of a theme of the show here and and people are jumping really hard on that you know so but we, we keep saying like two is too many I I understand the drive if um, you know you understand the appeal but uh but yeah you, you need to have some kind of backup there yeah no no I, I we'll, we'll keep going um, six and a half. Yeah, six and a half. Um, there's a lot of chat about me being on mute earlier. Um, podcast listeners didn't get to enjoy that, so I thought I'd drop that in there. It is 12.05 in the UK. I know that Hibbo doesn't drink Monday to Wednesday, so I've been left on my own as the sole drinker on this ship tonight. Um, on to the next one. At Rakfim S, he has 0.5 million in the bank. Sanchez, Trent, Shaw, Kufal, Simikas. Salo, Fernandez, Son, Ben Rama, Ings, and Antonio. His bench is Foster, Amity, Chowdhury, and Obafemi. Yes, I repeat, Chowdhury. Um, wow. Firstly, I don't know what Chowdhury costs. I imagine 4.5. I imagine he's just trying to be clever here and not own a Brownhill or Basuma or whoever else might actually start um, because Chowdhury sure as shit ain't starting. So that, that immediately, that scares me. And then you've got Obafemi being sold. That's a pretty dead bench in a COVID season. So going back to what you said earlier, like people are going very heavy on this light bench since the four millions arrived. Guess what? Amity makes an appearance as his third bench. So I'm sorry. I love your 11. If I was just rating your 11, I'd probably give it an 8.5 out of 10. The fact that there is literally a dead bench, that's a straight 6 out of 10 from me. Yeah. Agreed. On to the next one. Right. So we know we've got Sega at Silence. Um, he's got 3 million on the bank. For upgrading Marais Gundogan son. Um I don't know. He stirred me back, man. Trent, Dunk, Kuffel, Salah, Jara, Sar, Ben Rama, Fernandez, Tony, and Antonio. He's got Foster, Ailing, Liveramento, and Oba Fembe. How does he have three million in the bank? Does he have three million in the bank? 
three million in the bank. <laughs> Remember, guys, he got four point five out of ten last time. Be kind. Um, I was goading FPL Salah to give him a four out of ten. That clip has been released on Twitter. Let, let's make sure it's not the same. Look, I wouldn't be going under. I, w- I wouldn't be going under no season with no three million in the bank. That's just how it is. Sar. We don't really know what we're going to get. Uh, Watford look as if they've got 40 forwards, maybe in FPL. Um, I do like the defence. I think the defence is okay. I think Sars a bit of a risk when you've also got Jara and Ben Rama. The three million I would definitely, definitely put on the pitch somewhere. I would probably upgrade Sar if possible. Sounds good. Um, on to the next one. So these last ones, um, we're just going to give a score now. But we will read out the team. So I'll, I'll leave this one with you, Gabe. Okay, at Akshay Akundi, uh, two Ks in, in Akundi, um, 1.5 million in the bank. Game week two, Mason or Jota Tamarez for game week two. Sanchez in the back, Shimikas, Shaw, and White, Salah, Fernandez, Barnes, Greenwood, Jota, Antonio, and Ings up front. Gunn, Reguilon, Veltman, and Obafemi on the bench. Uh, rate this a six. Too much money on the uh, too much money on the bench. I'm not really sure what, yeah, what's going on there. Come yeah, on. fair play. Um, and this one I'll take. So at FPL underscore Dallas, they have 0.5 million in the bank. They have Sanchez, Trent, Shaw, Simicas, Salah, Fernandez, Barnes, Benrama, and Gundogan, with Antonio Ings, a bench of Steel, White, Ailing, Obafemi. No, I think I've said 0.5 million in the bank, but this is what happens when you have this many drinks in. Debating Mares or Gundogan. Um, Barnes, Ben Rama, and Greenwood. So they got three midfield spots that they're not sure of, and they want to pick three out of these players: Mares, Gundogan, Barnes, Ben Rama, Greenwood. Um, for me, just my initial instinct when I look at this team is it kind of scares me. Um, I, I really don't like Obafemi. I'm just I'm really against the three-five-two. Maybe that's just me. And all the people who've got a three-five-two and are getting reviewed by me, I feel so sorry for you because I'm sure you get a better score from someone else. Um, for me, with the current 11 I see in front of me, I give it a 7 out of 10. I I liked Gundogan a bit more before I saw KDB in training, I'd say. So I may have given you a higher score before I saw KDB in training in that photo with Jack Grealish. And it looks like Grealish may ask KDB to be his boyfriend soon. So he, he had the love eyes out, the doe eyes and shit. Like, you, you know Grealish. We've seen those photos leaked of him to the media. He's a lover boy. Moving on. Okay, so this is F- FPL Fresh. Um, he's got Sanchez, Shaw, Kufel, Chambers, Simicus, um, Son, Fernandez, Morris, Salah, Smuffro, and Angs. Tony on the bench, Feltman on the bench. He's got a lot of money on the bench. I'm going to say maybe a seven. Seven. Okay. Fair. Fair. One for you, Gabe. Yeah, yeah. I like the little Chambers shot in that previous one. Um, I did uh, tell us all better and start the last preseason friendly of the season. Yeah. At FPL uh, or at mm-hmm. FPL underscore point break, zero in the bank. Um, has he got the best four million defender? Well, let's see. Uh, he's got Sanchez in the back, Shaw, Trent, Shofal, Salah, Salah, Mane, uh, Greenwood, Rafinha, Ings, Antonio, and Tony. So on the bench, he has Foster, Amarte, Ailing, and Brownhill. So we see another another Mane draft here. I, I, I kind of like this draft. He's got some some safe players. He's got a he's got a you know one big punt. Um, I'm gonna give this one a solid eight and a half. Could be better. Hafinha could be a better pick. Um, obviously, the fact that uh, yeah, you got a Ailing on the bench, eight and a half. Sounds good. And they can go back and listen about what we think about Rafinha about ten times for the last RMTs. So we're going to add FPL Zigic. Um, they have Sanchez, Trent, Shaw, Kufal, Amity, Salah, Fernandez, Son, Jota, Antonio, Tony, with a bench of Steel, Ailing, Brownhill, and Obafemi. They have a heavy midfield stack, but um, you know they got Amity starting every week, and Ailing has the tough fixtures on the bench with Brownhill and Obafemi. Um, I would probably personally give this team a seven out of ten again, just because I do like it. Amity, he he has okay fixtures and he will play the first few. And I love Ailing long term. So once Amity gets kind of dropped, you'd imagine by then Ailing has the good fixtures, and that's why I'm being a bit kind to them with the score. Um otherwise I may have been a bit more 
Nima, I think I think you got all of the Obafemi drafts. Yeah, and I and and that's why I'm giving them sevens. Like I'm being yeah. kind. I'm being kind. I'd normally give them a five out of ten. Um, Jake Scott says Twitter sleeping on Chilwell. Uh, Chilwell is not starting in game week one. Yeah, so I, I don't think they're sleeping. Um, I think the poor swords who start with Chilwell, good luck. You need your first bench because from what I understand, there's a friendly schedule for the day after Chelsea play Palace and um, it's with Weymouth for someone and it's specifically being scheduled for players like Chilwell, Mount and others who are coming back late from the Euros and from the Olympics um, and from Copa America. So like I want Chilwell, he'd be in my game week one team if I knew he'd start. But it sounds like they're giving them an entire friendly because they're not playing in the Super Cup tomorrow night. They're not playing in game week one. And with that in mind, like I can't imagine starting with Chilwell. I'll leave have, this one to you here, but We have FPL Donoe and he's got Sanchez, Trent, Shaw, Digne, Salah Fernandez, Ben Rama, Zayesh, Angs, Tony, Antonio. Foster, Ben White, Brown, Hall and Omar Bamba, the alley. I'm going to give him a six, maybe. Ziyech, I just wouldn't pick him at all, to be honest. There's too much risk. I don't like Chelsea's opening fixtures. He could play against Palace right enough, you know, because I know he's been in pre-season and plenty haven't, but um, I don't really know about them. As an option going forward, it wouldn't be for me, you know. I'd give it a six. Fair. And then we've got the last... RMT of the evening. So there's at Tinesh underscore B, a good friend of mine. I've known the kids since we were like 12, so nearly 20 years. Um, I put him last just to really, really make him watch the entire 2010. <laughs> I really wanted to make him sweat to see what we think. Um, is his second draft. He has Sanchez, Trent, Shaw, Kufau, and White, Salah, Fernandez, Greenwood, and Zaha. Uh, yes. Ings and Ian Acho. Um, Foster Ailing Dallas. And Hobbefemi, um, 0.5 million in the bank, and he doesn't care about any of his two forwards. They're both completely interchangeable. I'll, why don't we all three of us review this with our individual scores? And I am a bit surprised, kind of seeing Zaha, Zaha starting against Chelsea, Ian Acho rotation risk, um, Dallas quite pricey to not even play, and then an Hobbefemi forward. Did, did, I have a bad feeling that he may be the one out of 10 of tonight. I give him a two. Two, damn, that hurts. I'll go to a three. I'll give him a 4.5 out of 10 to be yeah. sweet. Um, I told him in the WhatsApp reply, like, it looks great. And he goes, yeah, there's a lot of things I'm uncertain of. I go, don't worry, we'll slaughter you on air, mate. And we did do that. So DM me, Tanesh, if you need some real help. Are you in a money league with him? I am. So he yeah, that's why you told him shit out. Great, no, no, I would just tell him his team's great. Yeah, Remember, fine. my money leagues are on fan team. It's, it's not allowed to have money teams in FPL. So, official FPL, I've called you out every episode. I'll call no. you out again. Fuck you. Anyway, don't <laughs> take the YouTube video down. I don't even want to explain why I'm saying the F you. You can listen to the last three episodes to hear why I said that shit. Because you guys do not care about us. All you've done in five years is change the deadline for the game and reskin it. Fucking appalling. Let's go to the live Q&A to our amazing haulers who are still here with us. There's still 35 of you somehow giving a shit at 12.16. <laughs> this is going to be our longest episode to date. So I think we'll probably only do five to 10 minutes Q&A and we will get out of here. So I'm going to play the Tumbleweed video one more time. And please ask any questions you have that we may not have answered throughout the course of tonight while you see me embarrass myself for the third time of the evening. Definitely our most popular member of the Net That Hall crew, and you can definitely be our fifth crewmate now going forward. <laughs> definitely be our fifth crewmate now going forward. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old so, just while we're here as well, guys, so please do continue. All right, so continue to smash like and subscribe. 57 likes. We did get the dislike. I think it's someone who we reviewed, if I'm honest. <laughs> so fuck off and don't let the hit door hit you on the way out, mate. <laughs> Any questions in the Q&A that you want to pull up, lads, before we get out of here? I don't think that we are. There's, well, there's one here. There's, I'll just I'll, I'll put it on. So this guy, he's got Sanchez, <laughs> White, Trent, Shaw, Rafinha, Bruno... Mosa, Barnes, Tony, Angus, and Antonio. 
So he's basically landed with his own team for the Root My Team. He's got <laughs> two, <laughs> some I guess, and Marty and Gilmore, and he's got 1.5 million in the bank. And his question is, has he got too much in the bank? I would say he definitely does have too yeah. much in the bank. I wouldn't, I would like, I, I would maybe keep a half a million to try and build up a bit of flexibility to my side, but keeping one and a half million wouldn't be for me. Fair, fair. Um, what do you think about um, Greenwood? So we've been asked about people saying they like Greenwood. Obviously, Triggerlip said he liked Greenwood too, but people are worried about going for the United triple up, so they probably have Bruno and Shaw already. Um, I, I like the United triple up, if I'm being completely honest with you. I like the fixtures in the first six. I don't know. It's like a, it's a, it's a stack, and I think it's a nice stack day. You know, I, I was pulling up a data last night, and I think three of the teams that they play, like you're talking maybe... They've got Southampton, they've got Palace, and they've got somebody else. They they play three of the worst sides for XGC from last season, apart from two teams that were were relegated. So I think it's I think it's a wise move to kind of back United, if I'm being honest. And they thumped Leeds six two at home last year. So I do see goals in it, if I'm being honest, for United in the first six games. I, I, good to me. I would quest, I would question whether like the confidence that he'll start more than one game. In those three, in the first three, is that with the news of Marshall starting as centre forward, or potentially, you know, there's Mar- Martial, there's uh, Sancho will be there for game week two. Um, yeah, Ka- Cavani, cool. Cavani will be ready for game week two. Um, it sounds like Cavani might be a bit longer though. So they're saying, maybe, right? Yeah, they're saying maybe game week four or so. Oh, okay, or so three or four. I don't know. Even even so, with Martial and, and with Sancho, um, I don't know. I guess I another know, final it's, it's question. So w- where's Willock? I think I asked this before, but any of you for Willock? Um, he has gone up from 0.6% to 1.5% owned in the last few days. So there's definitely people looking at him. But at 6 million, are you going to go Willock over Ben Rama or Saar? I think he's potentially a very good pick. Like I know he's got West Ham in the opening match and then he's got Southampton at home in game week three. He's got Villa away in game week two. And, you know, he could work. Like I think... <laughs> We, we don't really know how nailed Ben Ram is going to be. Like, I know everybody's kind of saying, oh, he's basically going to take Lingard's place. And maybe he is going to take Lingard's place. But if I had to pick between the two of them now, I would probably go Ben Ram. It seems like a kind of sexier pick. Seems like it. Um, we've got FP on school, Sab. He asked about what do we think of Grealish versus low blocks? I think we need to see we, we need to see City first. I mean, it, yes, Grealish, Grealish versus low blocks makes sense. But that doesn't... I don't think that really means that. I don't have much confidence in sense. We've got Ram and Nathan asking, um, do we keep Watkins for the fixtures or do we get rid of him for a better forward? Um, well, the fact that he got subbed off injured, for me, that's enough to try and spend the extra 0.5 on things. I don't think there's much more to add there unless you yeah. guys have something to say. Um, we have one final question and then we'll get out of here. So we have uh, Ray. He's asking, what are our top four predictions for the Premier League, guys? So maybe each of us answer this one and then we'll play the stomp and get out of here. Uh, I'll say Man City, Chelsea, United, Liverpool to finish fourth. Okay. Oh, United are about to sign a D, uh, a D mid. I don't. That 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 would change everything. I'll say Chelsea. They win it. Lukaku Golden yeah, Boot. Golden Lukaku Golden Boot. Um. City second, United third, Liverpool fourth. Very interesting. Um, I would say City win. I would actually go as far as saying Liverpool second, Chelsea third, United fourth. I think whichever order we find them in, there is now very much a big four or top four in the Premier League and Spurs and Arsenal can get in the bin. So... On that note, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've not joined the Net That Hall Mini League, it is pinned on the at Net That Hall Twitter account we created recently. Please do enter. There's some fantastic prizes that we said at the beginning. We would love to keep in touch. The matchups and captaincy show is at 4 p.m. this Thursday with at FPL Lens Gabriel here and also FPL Mariner, the dar of the show, the official founder. It's going to be the last show before the Game Week 1 deadline. And then next week, we will kind of get into the normal routine, no more preseason content. And 
we will get going with every Tuesday and every Thursday when there's a Friday deadline or Friday if it's a Saturday deadline. So keep in touch, join the haulers. And for now, I don't know whether to leave you with the stomp or with the clip. I think I've shown the clip enough times. We'll leave with the stomp. See you guys on Thursday. Take care, lads.